Hi, I'm Greg. I'm the lead singer for Lipstick Generation. And I'm Steve. I'm the not doing my homeworker from Lipstick Generation. And welcome to the Lipstick Panel. Today on the Lipstick Panel, we are talking about an album that Steve has a ton of opinions on and is really going to contribute to the conversation with. Yep. We are talking about the debut album by the Black Mages. Because Steve and I were talking and he said, I don't want to do any more JRPG soundtracks, nope. Greg. I don't care for those. And then I was saying, well, would you want to do like a heavy metal JRPG cover album? And you're like, yeah, that sounds cool. I would probably enjoy that. And so that's why we decided to do this episode. And Steve did not notice the difference between the songs. Nope. But <laughs> we have some guests that might notice the difference between the songs. We've got returning to the program, Mr. Victor Krauss, a amazing neo alt rock musician, and not just neo in like the Matrix sense, but like, you know, in like a, a new pushing the genre forward sense. Welcome back to the show, Victor. <laughs> hey, I'm back, but also in the Matrix sense. But, but also in the Matrix sense, like both. We've we've got uh You know if if more uh if more musicians were like Neo, then Dimebag would still be with us. <laughs> uh, RIP in oh, peace. Oh, Whoa. That that was in really poor taste. <laughs> what what too too soon? It's been like a decade, it's fine. Should I should I've gone with Kurt? Uh, uh yeah, because at least that was like self inflicted. <laughs> but Dodge then, it. Well, what? was it was it though? Where's Steve Edwards uh, and to defend also Courtney Love? It wasn't in the heart. <laughs> uh, speaking of transitions, hey, who's that over there? Oh, it's someone's first appearance on the Lipstick panel. We've got Andrew from Amusement Sparks, a podcast uh, that uh, I've been on before. Welcome to my show this time. Welcome, Andrew. It's a nice place you got here. Thanks for having me over. Yeah, it's uh, very, very comfortable on the Skype couch. Hey, wait, hey, hey I, I see uh, someone creeping out of the shadows. Uh, oh, look, it's Joseph de Gaulier. From I the thought Godzilla I hit him podcast. under the cushions. No, no. <laughs> it's Joseph de Gaulier from Ultima Final Fantasy and the Godzilla podcast and formerly of Nude Clan and Super Sexy Swingin' Fan Fiction and uh, all the podcasts, all oh, 500 God. of them. Oh, God. Just, uh, just mention the first two. We don't need to talk about the others. <laughs> um, you mean your magnum man. opus of podcasting, super sexy swing and fan fiction? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's forget that one ever existed. Um, I am in a bunk right now, so you were right about the shadows. I'm. Uh, I could. I. I couldn't be more hidden away in my apartment than I am now. I got a little curtain over me. Literally crouched in the shadows on this Skype call. With my headphones on, and I'm ready. <laughs> Somebody's like walking through your house, being like, "Where's that voice coming from?" <laughs> <laughs> they know. They were warned. Uh, Black mages. Let's get into this. I've, I've I've listened to this music, a lot of this music, for a very long time. So it's interesting to to come back and revisit. Um, but yeah, Final Fantasy, man, it's great. Great stuff. Nabu Imatsu, kicking ass. Uh, I got one question before for you before we start. Uh, uh, does anybody know anything about the production of this album, and was any of the bass guitar stuff real? <laughs> so I, I do know a little <laughs> bit about the production of the album. I believe the bass was played by uh, Suyoshi Sakito, who also played guitar on the album and did a lot of the sequencing. Uh, I want to go around the panel and talk about everyone's history with uh, this album in particular, and I guess uh, Final Fantasy, uh, if you want to get into that. But uh, Joe, since you already started, I want to uh, go with you first. So what's your history with, uh, I guess, the music of Final Fantasy and this album in particular, however you want to take it? Mm, the music of Final Fantasy, well, uh, I've been a Final Fantasy fan since, um, I don't know, junior high? So what? Uh, Ninth grade area, kind of around there. Um, borrowed Final Fantasy VIII off a friend, and although I don't really care for the music of Final Fantasy VIII, the other games in the series have great scores, uh, and so I just kind of always like listening to little remixes of those things. I had a friend who had like a whole bunch of MP3s of like Black Mages and other types of remixes for the Final Fantasy series, and I had that on my uh, parents' computer for years, and sometimes I would just like pop those in. I I would make little short films in high school, and a lot of them have Black Mages music in the background, <laughs> frankly. So, like, uh, including one, uh, including my favorite track off of this album. So, um, yeah, I'm uh, very familiar with uh, the music of Nobuo Uematsu, who's the main uh, composer for most of the Final Fantasy series, and um, really familiar with a lot of these tracks, and uh, just years and years, actually. Like, uh, I don't know, geez, 12, 13 years? 
of listening to this music. So there you go. That's my history with that. And uh, with Final Fantasy, of course, uh, I have a Final Fantasy podcast. and I've been going through every single uh, console released Final Fantasy game over the last uh, five years. And uh, we're about to wrap up soon. So this is an uh, interesting territory to go into on your guys' podcast. But yeah, long history of Final Fantasy. Well, let's uh, let's shift gears completely. Hey, Steve, how's it going, buddy? Hey, how's it going, Greg? What's Thanks your... for having me on the on your podcast. <laughs> I mean, you're the co-host. You're my you're my trusty sidekick. You're the Andy Richter to my Conan O'Brien. I'm your engineer. Right, that's true. You're the one with the good mics because I'm broke as fuck. <laughs> Woo! It is your pop filter, though. Wow. Right, but you're the one using it. Actually, oh, nobody's maybe. using it right uh, now because I'm lazy. Also, I know how to use mic techniques so I don't pop into my mics. So, oh, we're all going to be watching for that one. <laughs> so, so Steve, uh, what's your history with Final Fantasy uh, music and uh, this album? So I've never played all the way through a Final Fantasy game, and I very rarely hey, listened to... Hey, you beat Soul of Rebirth. I count that. <laughs> that does not count. Uh, <laughs> I've very rarely listened to more than 15 to 30 seconds of any Black Mage's song, depending on how... I just popped right into my mic. <laughs> <laughs> depending on how long the AMV Hell clip was. <laughs> <laughs> so that's most of my experience with the Black Mages specifically. I mean, I um I have listened to them occasionally. I think they played the anime convention here in Nashville once, and so I heard a little bit of them as I walked by the main room once, busy with some task of some sort, putting up signs telling people where to stand or whatever. Um, yeah, uh, it's that's that's really about it. Uh, I've. I have a passing familiarity with the band, uh, a mild appreciation for them, but I'd never actually like sat down and listened to them deeply. To be fair, I still haven't. I listened to the album once, and then I messaged Greg and said, I'll, I, I, I don't have strong enough opinions on these songs to rank them, and then he needled me until I gave him some kind of ranking. So if you guys are concerned that the numbers are all wrong at any given point, it's probably on me. But here's what I will say. Uh, Steve is just the Kefka of this panel. An agent of chaos. <laughs> <laughs> just s setting things in ways that they shouldn't be set. Moving the statues, moving the rankings, just for the sake of the lulls. So, wow. I almost understood that reference. <laughs> Powerful. All right, we oh. placed Kefka with the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, add magic. There okay. you go, that's Kefka. I'm like, I'm like the Joker with magic. Right. If the Joker could cast Faraga. Yeah, if if the Joker was really into playing card games. Wait, hold on, he is. Like that's that's one of his major visual <laughs> motifs. But like but like different card games with monsters and hit points and actually I don't know how Magic the Gathering is played. I'm a really I'm a really bad fake nerd. Wait, does Kefka play Magic the Gathering? <laughs> no, I just said with magic and that's why I said a card game. It was a nerdy joke. Well you see you gotta collect I mean you've played. Jokes are funnier right? when you explain them. <laughs> They are. Agree more. Yet another joke about death, perplexing some, and just plain scaring most. Of All right, let's shift things over to <laughs> let's shift things over to Andrew. Uh, it's his first time on the podcast. Going to put him right in the middle. So, Andrew, what's your experience cool. with uh, Final Fantasy, this album in particular? Whatever you want to, you know, just give your brief history. Whatever you want to say. Sure. So, uh, I was first getting into video games right about when Final Fantasy VII came into reality. And uh, I was obsessed with it, but I was terrible at it, like, playing at my friend's house. And then eventually I would borrow the guidebook from him and just read it at school, even though I had no way to play the game. And then eventually I saved up enough money to buy the game and beat it, you know, when I was, like, 12 or something like that. Um, but it's, it's, I don't know, Final Fantasy VII has always been my top one. Um, but then I got into 8 and 10 and then 12 and tactics and tactics advanced and all that stuff but seven there's just some kind of something about the atmosphere in that game and the tone of it that really always stayed with me like in the back of my head and like this way that transcended the video game so like it's hard for me to chase that feeling with the other final fantasy games which they're cool video games but they don't really like you know stay with me all the time like final fantasy 7 did for like 15 years or whatever um but then this album, let's see, probably about 10 years ago, I was looking to listen to more, like, 
metal music and more video game music and i was really into like black metal and like some pretty aggressive stuff and this wasn't quite what i was hoping it would be when i first heard there's like a metal version of the final fantasy soundtrack um i so i liked it but it was just a little bit too i don't know kind of wimpy sounding for me at the time but since then i've come to appreciate it for what it is uh i like what they did within the limitations of staying pretty true to the original soundtrack i was just kind of hoping there'd be something where it's a little bit more of an intense uh change from the original composition but i understand what they're going for so it's a good album i'm glad i'm glad it's out there wait did you ever manage to find that black metal version of the final fantasy soundtrack because <laughs> uh, no, but i want one? to hear this i know right Oh, that'd be awesome. That would be amazing. I mean, you could just play a random black metal song and say it's the Final Fantasy soundtrack, but the <laughs> lack of melody that genre has, you could make that bullshit case. Man, Greg. Greg. <laughs> like, just in well, case Drew was for... listening to this episode. <sighs> I don't have any whiskey. <laughs> I really love, like, like what uh, August Burns Red has done with uh, the Christmas music genre, for example. Mm. Like, there's so many good, like, really hardcore Christmas songs, which is odd, but you'd think there'd be more, like, video game music that was given that treatment like uh have you i heard, don't know have you heard machine supremacy no they are a finnish uh i think finnish somewhere in scandinavia they are a uh-huh. power metal band that um you know instead of singing the usual songs about like oh we are off to fight the dragon their songs are all about we are off to fight the dragon in a video game <laughs> and, then, and then they use a sid station for their uh music I, they they came they toured the united states a couple years back and i was sent i was texting greg photos of them because the lead singer wears the same naruto gloves that he does on stage <laughs> that's so funny it's so, like no, i'm just sitting a- up there from like nerd <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't wear the uh, the Naruto gloves anymore because we're not singing about believing in yourself and following your dreams. We're singing about getting laid. No, yes, we're a mature and responsible <laughs> grown up band now. <laughs> what's what's That's more, the image change you were talking about? Yep. What, yeah. What's oh, more boy. mature than uh, than giving up on your dreams and trying to get laid? <laughs> uh, Steve was talking to me about um, uh, certain uh, aspects of the music video before we were recording today. He was like, Greg, are you aware that like people can see your bulge in that video? I'm like, yeah, so? <laughs> I was just, just trying to figure out like which one of us should broach it with the director and be like, hey, please make sure to edit out Greg's dick. No, and I'm like, please, extra shots of my dick. Yeah, so you're probably going to need to message him and let him know. <laughs> yeah, like, make sure, you know, the, the close-ups of the pelvic thrust. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we specifically gave him instructions saying that the only butt he was allowed to zoom in on was Greg's. That's true. <laughs> wow. Is it any good, the Steve? Vi- Greg's butt or the video? Yeah, uh, uh, Greg's butt. I don't Dude, know. my he, butt is fantastic. He doesn't bike as much as Turn me. On your video. Turn so on sure your video. Fine. Turn on yeah, your camera. Let us see. <laughs> I don't actually have a camera, just my phone. Yeah. <laughs> right, but I, will, I a, look. Is there, it a squatter's butt or a biker's butt? Dude, I've I've got well because on stage one of my moves is shaking my butt, so I've got years of butt shaking experience. So it is a nice, firm, supple butt. Also doing glam rock, wearing heels. So like I've got like a little bit of the girl booty, but I run. So it's like it's right. It's a nice booty. It's a nice booty. It's a it's an appropriate glam rock booty. Yeah, well rounded. I was gonna say. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> you, you've seen that photo that's been making the rounds. That's you know of uh, like back shots of both Captain Marvel and Peter Parker, and somebody commenting that life's not fair just because Peter Parker has the far superior butt. I've hmm. not seen that. That's very interesting. So I have a great idea. Uh, so while uh, Victor does his intro, I'm going to look for a good picture of my butt. So Victor, tell us <laughs> a little bit about your history with uh, the, the, the music and such while I look for a picture of my butt. You want to look uh, for mine so while you're been... at it, Greg? No, I'm not. Uh, man, I don't know how to find a picture of your butt that's that quickly. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I've, uh, I've been a Final Fantasy fan for a hot minute. Uh probably about half my life now. Uh, I got access to Final Fantasy VI around the time that Final Fantasy X came out, and I've kind of been behind on video games like that ever since. Um, And I have since played all of the non-MMOs, and I've beaten most of them, and am, in fact, uh, I have started a playthrough of eight, so I'm I'm working way on an official playthrough of eight right now. And... 
I I think the main thing that drew me to them was the uh, the soundtracks actually. So I I more than playing the games, I would listen to the music, and I had heard that the black mages were a thing that existed, um, and. It was interesting. I was like, "Oh, that uh, metal band playing this music. I'm sure that's that's uh, very fun for them to do." And now, having listened to the album, it was fun for them. I'm sure, not as fun. <laughs> well, wow. ouch! Ah. All right. No, that's not that's not a picture of my butt, Steve. No, but I was um, showing him that picture that I was explaining. All right. That's a pretty great. That's a pretty great comparison. That's interesting. Oh Why? my god. <laughs> All right, so all right, so Steve, I'm about to I'm about to I'm about to email you a picture of my butt. Okay, for you to send to everybody. <laughs> this is gonna, this is the worst episode we've ever done, or maybe Check the best. The description of this episode that needs to be the <laughs> thumbnail for this. Uh... The, the thumbnail will be <laughs> a picture of my my butt, not the album cover. Okay, so ironically, I probably have um, a lot of history with this album in particular. So uh, going back. Um, Young Greg was was not a fan of of music. Uh, I grew up in the '90s, uh, the era of new metal and boy bands, and I just thought that music was was bad, terrible, had no interest in it. But uh, as a kid, I really fell in love with JRPGs, and loved the soundtracks for those games. Thought they were amazing. So I mean, there were a couple musical things I liked as a kid. Like I thought the Beatles were cool, and I liked Michael Jackson. Eventually, bought a Queen CD. Uh, but, you know, my favorite music as a kid was probably video game soundtracks, and the Final Fantasy series was by far my favorite. And so, eventually, I fell into the rock scene, uh, and uh, I ended up working on an album with a guy named Billy Morris, who uh, used to play in, uh, in Warrant and Quiet Riot and a whole bunch of other bands. And while I was recording the album with him, we did a lot of trades. So, it'd be like... Some days it would be just like, hey, I'll just pay you a fee for playing guitar on the album. And then uh, some days it'd be like, hey, Greg, if you help me uh, move some of my equipment, I'll play for you for free this day. And so we did a lot of like trading back and forth of services, him playing guitar and producing the album, and then me helping him out with random stuff. And so he had a nightclub in town, and he needed a DJ to play metal music. And he's like, Greg, I want you to be the DJ at my metal club. And I'm like, sweet. So I played some Black Mages music as part of my playlist. Like I played, <laughs> I played Metallica. I played Slayer. I, you know, I played some bands that I wasn't as into that the crowd was into. And even though I wasn't playing video games actively at that point in my life, I still had a lot of affection for the the music of this uh, of the series and wanted to, you know, give give a little give a little shout out and like acknowledge that it was still part of my life in a small way. And hopefully turn some people on to the music of Nobuo Uematsu through my DJing. And, like, the, the prog rock nerds who were there thought it was awesome. They're just like, man, this keyboard sounds like Deep Purple. I'm like, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, so, it does. Uh, I, so I've been familiar with this album for a very long time. Uh, but then, going back to it, it lost a lot of luster for me. And a lot of things, uh, it, it didn't hold up as well upon my latest listens. And then um, I did some research into the band and saw who the guitar player was. Uh, Suyoshi Sakito, who did the arrangements for uh, the Final Fantasy 1 and 2 remakes. And also did one of my favorite game soundtracks of all time, Brave Fencer Musashi. And wow. uh, then I started to connect a bunch of dots in my head where I figured out how this band came about. He was rearranging those songs for re-release, and he's a guitar nerd, so he was probably busy riffing on the songs, thought they were fun, invited everyone over to jam, and said we should form a band. And that's just how the Black Mages came into being, if you look at that timeline. That's probably what went down. So I trapped the dude down on Facebook, became his Facebook friend, and we've just been chatting about Van Halen and Dream Theater and shit. And just oh, uh, yeah. uh, a nice dude and made me completely reevaluate the album where I'm like, okay, now knowing the personalities involved, does that change my perspective on the guitar technique, on the arrangement? And it's still ultimately a mixed bag for me overall, but, you know, finding out that he was involved and he was sort of the guy with the idea of rearranging all these songs and just riffing on them on his guitar because he was having fun working on the soundtracks 
gave me a new appreciation for it and uh, helped me look at it from a different perspective, which I hope I can help bring some of that into the discussion. And a uh, picture uh, of uh, my butt is being sent. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's mostly a yeah. shirt. <laughs> it, there's hint of butt in there. There's <laughs> hint of butt. I see lower cheek. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, yeah. semi obscured. I think you're doing all right. Here. Yeah, you got you got to yeah. maintain a little bit of class. You don't just like wave the whole thing out there, right? But I'm saying like sure. you can see that it's it's supple, <laughs> you, and you, and look, you can tell by the legs that I'm not a fatty. So it's like that that is a nice you know supple buttocks. All right. To be fair, that good, is sort good. of the, that is largely the point of heels. What is it like? Every inch of loft in your heels makes your butt stick out by another half inch, kind of thing. Is, that a, is there a mathematical equation there? There is some math for this. I don't know it exactly off the top of my head, but it's sort of a documented uh, looks thing. Looks good. Looks good, Greg. Thank you. you. Nice yeah. <laughs> Look, really looking forward to that video now. <laughs> hey, hey, Greg, uh, who'd you say the guitarist was again? Uh, Suyoshi Sakito. Sakito. Uh, did he do all the guitar? All the or? guitar is him. Okay. He's great. Yeah, no, yeah, he is. Dude can shred. He is. Uh, the thing is, I knew he was a great composer for for many many years because his soundtrack for Brave Fencer Musashi is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated in video game. Where just his use of uh, motifs and themes and the way they play throughout the soundtrack, like it's a very excellent cohesive piece. Uh, but each track is also like melodically catchy on its own. So it's just fantastic. His arrangements for the Soul of Rebirth and uh, PlayStation ports. You know, I, I I thought were really good. We discussed that on the, when we did the Final Fantasy one and two soundtrack episodes with Joe, and how much I liked the rearrangements and what was done with them. And so then find out that you know he was the guitar player, and like oh, and he can shred too. Like just a lot of respect for him as a musician, and uh, just just a pleasant guy to chat with. There is the language barrier, but through Google Translate, we are able to talk about ripping guitar solos. So just nice guy. The universal language of ripping guitar solos. Right. I mean that's something everyone understands. That's I wrote so a fun. short film about that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Just wrote it? Did you film it or what? <laughs> no. It was it was after film school, so I didn't have the uh I didn't have the uh the personnel around. Oh, okay. Isn't that <laughs> all right, another discussion for another day. Cool. Yeah, another day. <laughs> <laughs> we can make the episode about that though if you want. About film school? Uh, yeah. About film school <laughs> or butts. Oh or butts. man. Hell yeah. Well, you know, instead of that, how about we get into the ranking? Okay. Sure. <laughs> Fine. I suppose. Oh, Steve, you're just here for jokes. It's true. I'm just here for jokes. And to find pictures of my own butt because somebody doesn't have my back, as it were. Oh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Look, man, I'm busy hosting the show. You gotta look for pictures of your butt while you're ignoring us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So coming in as the least best song from the Black Mages, we've got Battle Scene from Final Fantasy One coming in at the bottom of the ranking. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, nobody nobody went to bat for this one. Joe did. Yeah, Joe went to bat for it. I guess. Um, I like all the pieces on this um, on this thing, and this one's kind of like middle of the track for me. Um, it's got kind of a weird... For an album opener, it's kind of odd. It's really like mellow opening uh, for a battle scene. It's got that psychedelic edge that this whole album basically has. Uh, interesting keyboard choices was I, what I wrote down. Yeah. Uh, I do love the multiple solos section. Of course, that is almost every song on this album. There's like a, everybody's like trading off with our solos. I do love, now this was before I started to suspect that the bass was not a real bass. Mm. Um, I do love the slapping of the bass in this piece of music <laughs> uh, and the bass guitar slash bass keyboard uh, thing. Slapping the keys. The star. It's the star of this track. I'm a real big fan of that. So, yeah, I really love the bass work in this thing. Um, so I, I dig this piece of music. So, That's where I'm at. <laughs> so uh, where I'm at with a lot of these pieces 
is that, you know, as I was just complimenting Sakito and his arrangements, I don't think that a lot of these are necessarily the best arranged in allowing the melodies of the pieces to shine. And, uh, you know, all right, so surprise, Greg is talking about melody on a podcast. Uh, that never happens on this show. But um, my big thing, especially working in uh, the bands that I've been in, I've always been focused on what will make the individual song sound the best and not about what part is going to make each musician sound the best. So there will be times where I'll be working with uh, a musician and... Um, like on, on the first Lipstick album, there was a song where Billy Morris really wanted to do a very complicated bass part, but then it uh, trampled on top of the melody, and I said, we can't do that because it doesn't work as a cohesive whole. Um, I've had that with uh, guitar players. Uh, Steve is usually very open to me um, critiquing uh, arrangement because for me, it's about the finished product and not about just like the isolated track. So you can have a really great drum part but if it doesn't work with the rest of the song, it, it doesn't work. And so a lot of the arrangement choices I found makes the melody less catchy. And uh, I understand it's a, it's a reinterpretation of these pieces. It's not meant to be exactly the same. It's meant to do something different. But unfortunately, sometimes what's different loses some of the great, greatest parts of the original. So... Um, Joe, you mentioned on our Final Fantasy 1 episode, there was a build in this battle theme that you really liked that is essentially missing completely from this version. We get some different cool stuff in its chains, like the opening riff is kind of like a cool chugging, you know, rock metal thing, but it, we lose some melodic parts that were very good in the original, and on, on top of that, I feel that uh, a lot of the solos on this album entirely... Um, don't melodically flow very well between the sections, where they're very well done solos, but they don't match the melodic themes of the rest of the piece. And uh, like the chord progressions underneath are a little bit more awkward, and it doesn't it doesn't flow as an entire piece for me. That also said, uh, this piece I was never a big fan of anyway. It's one of my lowest ranked battle themes in the series, so all those things combined made me rank it, you know, pretty low. Uh, Okay, yeah, I ranked it at the bottom. So I still actually enjoy the piece. I still think it's good. Everyone's playing competently. But, like, the the fact that uh, it detracted so much from what the original had in a positive way is why I had to rank it at the bottom. Yeah, it, it sounds like they just tried to use too many different, like, synthesizer sounds or effect pedals or whatever. It's just, like, every, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, it's, like, they just kind of switched out the guitar. It's it just kind of seemed disjointed and and like it was just a bunch of people playing guitar, not like a band. That's kind of what messed it up for me. Is like there wasn't a good sound, a cohesive sound to the melody. It just kept changing instruments. It was it was weird. But yeah, this is my least favorite song on the album, unfortunately. And I mean, ironically, this was before they were a real band, where the instrument that is fake on this album is the drums. Mm. Um, wow. And so then uh, they eventually, when they started playing live shows, they got a drummer and they got a live bassist. But yeah, the bass was real. The drums were what were fake on this album. The instrument that was fake was the band. Ooh. Oh, I think uh. there... <laughs> I think there's some... Um, on another track, there's like a... there's a Or on another two tracks, there's some, like, bass runs that sound like a keyboard. Oh, yeah, there's bass. definitely a lot of keyboard bass on this Oh, album. yeah, no, there's keyboard bass, too, but there's, I, but there's live I, bass also. I suspect there's some live bass mixed in with some keyboard bass. In oh, the yeah, background. absolutely. Like, the bass playing is a little too perfect. I kind of suspect, especially in this track... All that like beautiful slapping, I I, I suspect um, some bass stuff. Honestly, guys, I know you guys are all kind of like not having this this track, but I I love the bass guitar stuff on this track. It, it brought it brought it up so far for me on that one. I love good bass. So that's the only one that didn't change tones, I guess. So it was kind of uh, crazy and all over the place. But, Honestly, I think this song is pretty good, and I'm a little surprised I ranked it second from the bottom. Why did I, Greg? Uh, so the reason that you ranked it so low, Steve, is that um, you said the, there's only a couple tracks I care about. Um, and then uh, I argued with you about how you wanted me to rank all the other ones and give them points. And so we just um, randomly would match someone else's ranking. You got me there. But nobody else ranked <laughs> this second from the bottom. Yeah, because it was the only one where I, I couldn't find a direct match. 
So there was sure. just the number that was left. Yes. Okay, fair enough. But honestly, even if you ranked it, you'd have to rank it much higher for it to have made a difference. Oh yeah, this is seven points away from the next one. Yeah, so even if it got randomly put somewhere else, this still likely would have been ranked at the bottom, Agent of Chaos or not. Shitty Agent of Chaos. That's what they call me. <laughs> Indifferent Agent of Chaos. Agent of Chaos. <laughs> Any other comments on Battle Scene from Final Fantasy 1 before we move on? Uh, I really like how it starts, um, and then the rest of it, it's just like, as it goes on, I kind of lose interest. I think you're right, Greg. This is not the best arrangement of this uh, battle music for this game. Uh, I will agree with you on that. I think it's a cool arrangement, but it's not the best one. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it's cool. And the thing is, when you listen to this album, you can definitely see this was actually a hugely influential album. Because if you look at every, like shitty YouTube cover of a video game song, a lot of them sound like the Black Mages. Like, this sort <laughs> yeah. of, like, set the template of the kind of guitar tones those, you know, musicians use, the kind of drum sounds they use. Like, this set the template for a lot of, like, metal video game covers. And, you know, I, is this really a metal album? You know, that's up to debate as to what you consider metal. I mean, it's a little bit more of a rock album in terms of arrangement. I especially like those those keys. Those are very much like 70s prog rock. Like, guys, we've been listening to a ton of Yes, and they're sick. So, uh, but then you also, you have those, uh, you know, more chugging lower end guitars, which is more of a metal thing than a rock thing. So where do you place it in the spectrum? I think uh, Square Enix called it a metal album to market it easier. Uh, but it's just like, there's certain tracks where you listen to it. Like, this isn't even a metal song. This is basically just... A video game song like with a couple metal elements like we'll get to a certain track where i'm like this is not a metal song but it's cool mm -hmm. so i think it's just how they market it but it's really just they felt like doing arrangements of the songs in this way and then made a band out of it they, they were just having fun jamming yeah. but yeah so next up on the list we have battle scene 2 from final fantasy 2 <laughs> Hey, this is one of the ones I actually had an opinion on. There you wow. go. It sounded midi e. Yeah. <laughs> so I ranked it at the bottom. Dude, <laughs> this was my number one song. I am like shocked right what? now. What? Yeah. Oh, this is a I very swingy panel. Like there is. <laughs> aside Holy from cow. Steve being the agent of chaos, like this is. So this wow. got uh, this got twenty total points. You gave it ten of them. So half of the <laughs> song's points are from you. Good job. Wow, that is so strange. I spent a lot of time making sure that my my list was in order, and I'm like, I mean, obviously this is number one, but you know, there's a couple places where there were sort of ties, but this was definitely number one. It, it look, man, I told you your ranking was full of shit. Wow. Oh, wait, no, I didn't. You're the only person who's ranking I didn't tell was full of shit. I'm like, I'll be nice. <laughs> it's his first time on the show. <laughs> yeah, never seen me rank anything. <laughs> I did. I based it on a system. Of, there were three different categories I scored each song on on a scale of one to ten and then just added up the scores. Oh. And it was it was the, the instrumentation, the rhythm, and the melody. So you should be thankful or excited about that one, Greg. But, um, uh, you know, mildly, yes. Yeah. For me, I thought the, the synth and the guitar tones were really good, and I really loved the rhythm on this song. Like, the bridge slash B section, or whatever you want to call it, is such a cool change of pace that this is the one that gets stuck in my head all the time, and this is just my favorite song on the album. Um, the main theme I like a lot, although it does get a little bit repetitive, but it's I stand behind it. It's my favorite one. I love the uh, kind of atmospheric, almost like a Renaissance Fair vibe to that B section. It gets me going. I like this song. But you guys can rip it up. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the thing is, once it, it sort of suffers from the same issues that the, the last track did, and uh, that'll sort of be a repeating criticism until we get higher in the ranking with a lot of these. So some of the decisions makes the melody not shine as much as the original or as in, you know, Sakito's other arrangements uh, of, this, of this piece. Um... What I would say, this one does a better job of not losing as <laughs> Sorry, a picture of Steve's butt is distracted. I finally me. found a picture of my oh. butt. Uh, uh, I'm usually mugging for the camera, so. Yeah, but no, it's a, that's a great butt shot. Um, <laughs> is it butt mugging? It, it is butt mugging. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll get back to this while we're anxiously awaiting uh, Steve's butt. Uh, 
<laughs> so the, the the trick with this piece is that it doesn't lose as many good parts from the original incarnation of the song as the um, as uh, Final Fantasy One's battle theme did in the soundtrack. So that's one reason it gets additional points. Another reason it gets additional points is that neoclassical breakdown section. Uh, I'm a big Randy Rhodes, uh, Ozzy Osbourne fan. I, I think the first three Ozzy albums, so the two he did with uh, Randy Rhodes and the uh, album he did with the first album he did with Jakey e. Lee, are fantastic albums. Uh, you know, front to back, amazing guitar playing, and so this definitely has an early solo Ozzy feel from those first three albums. So that's going to win some significant points for me, uh, just as a musician appreciating that kind of playing. Uh, so that different aspect, uh, and the fact that it really fits in well with two thematically, because that one is very much a medieval fantasy world with it, without as much like weird little um, things that don't fit into a fantasy world. Like there's no moon whale in, <laughs> in FF2. Uh, you know, there's wait, there's whales on the moon. Uh, yes. Like in the Futurama episode? Like huh? like, uh, like Gojira, man. Those space <laughs> whales. Those uh, whales are on Mars. They're not telling tall tales and singing a whaling tune. But uh, but the fact that like it is perhaps the most like traditional medieval of all the Final Fantasies is why that neoclassical section really works. And why that score actually works really well together as a cohesive piece. Like it really fits in well with the uh, moody, melancholy atmosphere of the of that game. So, I mean, this it's a good piece. It's done well, uh, but uh, it's, it's still not shining as much as some of the other tracks. And the initial composition is one of my weaker battle themes in the series also. Better than the FF1 battle theme, I think, but uh, still weaker in the series overall. Hmm. Uh, I like the song. Um, I really like the little chose the dun dun, and then you hear like the little melody thing on in between. I really like that. Uh, thought it was a pretty cool piece. Uh, this was the song that gave me the uh, hey, this bass might not be real thing <laughs> for the first time. Um, it's got a super eighties keyboard trumpet part that I find kind of <laughs> cheesy. Uh, so that's why it's a little lower for me, but it's still a very cool track. So, those are my thoughts on Battle Scene 2. You did rank it higher than me. Uh, Victor, you ranked it lower than me. <laughs> um, I have my notes that kind of span every listen that I did. I would kind of just add to stuff as I listened to it more. And from the first time I listened to it, I wrote, I'm not a fan of the overall vibe of this album, but this one, this is one of the few that feels truly misguided in its execution. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, wow. But I think in my more recent listens, I was kind of like, I wasn't mad at it anymore, <laughs> but I this one just really didn't do a lot for me, but I do note that the guitars sound great, as usual. I'm not angry, just and, disappointed. <laughs> and then there's, and then there's uh, the break about two minutes in is uh, really cool. Yeah, I, th I think everyone has touched on like, that break being a cool section. And I think what I would say about this entire album is that basically every track is good in isolation. But as an entire album listening experience, unless you're a really big fan of the Final Fantasy music, I don't know if this is like an album for everybody. You can like you can play an individual song, DJing at a metal club, and if it's in between, you know, uh, Metallica and Soundgarden, people are like, yeah, this was a, this was a, that was a cool instrumental. So it, it fits in well in my metal DJ context, but it might not fit well in the let's listen to all these in a row context. That's fair. Yeah, that's a good point. Any other comments on Battle Scene 2 before we move on? Apparently not. No, I'm done I'm done right. talking about this crappy song. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm done talking about this crappy song. <laughs> Alright. Next up on the list, we have Fight with Seymour. Okay, so most of you nerds are wrong about this one. This is one of the best pieces <laughs> on the album. From I... I Go ahead. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> from Final Fantasy X. It's really just me and Joe one. who are wrong. Yeah, so really, jo just Joe is wrong. Uh, so here's um, the no, thing. No, I agree with Joe, though. <laughs> what? Final Fantasy X sucked. I, hey. Joe, oh, <laughs> this I don't want to hear. This I don't want to hear at all. 
do not. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You know what? I'm actually going to... I'm of chaos has taken a step too far. <laughs> you, know why? you know why I ranked this low, Greg? Go ahead. I'll you know why I go. ranked it at the bottom? It's because of that cymbal sound. Yes. It drove me nuts. It's like a fake it's hitting China symbol. It's hitting a part of my, like, eardrum that, like, makes makes my head hurt every time it does it. And it's like two-thirds of that song has that little, like, has that, like, splash symbol. And it, it just sounds terrible. Otherwise, it's a pretty cool rock track. But that symbol, if that symbol was taken out, we might have a totally different ranking. So is That's it just the way the symbol is produced or the plane? It, if it was a real China symbol, I would have loved this song. But it just, it annoyed me so bad. It sounded like an old version of Fruity Loops or something. Like, that was just such a I terrible... Mean, it might have been. I mean, yeah, yeah. Odds, odds are good that's how they did this. What? <laughs> yeah, because this is what, like, 2002? 2003? This first Black know, Mages yeah, album? 2003, yeah. 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 So... So, early days of, like, DAW. Not early days of DAW, but, like, early DAWs, early, earlier days of sample-based... Sample music. drums, yeah. So, th- I mean, this is... I mean, sampled music has been around since, like, the late 70s, though. So, like, I don't know. They could have... Di- digital sampling, though, has... Yeah, I guess you're right. ...often, often been a little bit cheesy. Like, yeah. You, like, a sampler has a pretty distinct sound, where it's, like, a repeated, actual, live sound over and over yeah. again. But digital samples tend to be, like, weirdly compressed or like constructed out of non-natural noises right that's totally you're totally right on that this definitely comes from that more digital side than the more analog side that that sound is so bad (laughs) yeah i think i just have a forgiveness for shitty drum sounds because i'm you know in a band where steve is the drummer so (laughs) (laughs) yeah I, i i and uh also uh on top of that um you know listening to a lot of video game music being used to just like lower quality midi drums so i I maybe i've known myself to that a bit also like steve is drumming uh in that band uh poorly on purpose so i'll give him some credit as being a competent musician but it was for the sake of the joke right i mean you really shouldn't hold snake vomit as the bar for anything that's fair but uh i can listen to a couple tracks of that that is well i think you listened to my solo snake vomit uh music not snake vomit proper oh yeah you have to listen to snake vomit the entire band the cohesive experience there's a lot less midi in the real version (laughs) oh god we all did we all did snake vomit solo album so uh that you just heard my snake vomit solo album but uh well (laughs) did, did you make him listen to trent greg uh, I told him to listen to the beginning of it, not the entire thing. <laughs> You're a bad friend. Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> but All right, next up. No, no, I, I, I haven't actually talked about this piece yet. <laughs> so the the thing is, fight, fight with Seymour. Seymour is a less cool villain in the Final Fantasy series. Like, his, his voice just doesn't sound super threatening. He's got a goofy hairstyle. And you're just like, man, I just want to fight this dude so I can, like, fight my dad instead, because that's way cooler. You know, get this blue-haired antler guy out of the way so I can get to the cool villains. <laughs> I think he works very... The cool villain, my dad. The cool villain, my dad. I mean, his, your, your dad in Final Fantasy X is actually really cool. Uh, well, that, was the, that was the plot of uh, Daddy Fantasy or whatever it was, right? Something like that. But just the, like the your... TV show they produced? Your alcoholic, uh, former sports star dad. Uh, great character. But um, Seymour, just like when you're coming off the heels of villains like Kefka and Sephiroth, he's just he's just not as awesome. He's very competent for the story. He's a good foil to the characters. But you're not like, man, that guy is super cool. You're just like, yeah, he he gets the job done. And so (laughs) he gets the job of villainy done. He gets the job of villainy done better, like upper half of the series, but still just like not like, yeah, this dude is awesome. and You're pumped about him. And so that, when you associate this with his character, you're like, oh yeah, that character isn't as cool. So in many ways, this song isn't as cool. But as a composition, it's one of the best boss themes in the series. Incredibly catchy, good build, good moving parts that flow together very well. And this is one of the tracks where the great things about the original are not lost in this version at all. Where this version is basically just as good as the original version, you could listen to either or. Both are great. And I think this is one of the ones where it just really shines. I think it was the closing track for a reason because it's one of the stronger pieces. And you had to follow Dancing Mad 
with something really strong, really catchy. And that's what this piece is. It's really strong. It's really catchy. It's got a great melody. And the, pardon me, the different instruments work very well together in this piece, aside from the, the splash cymbal, which is a very good part, but perhaps they could have used a better sample. But like the keys and everything on this track, they work so great together. All right. But also, it's not even really a metal song. Like, it's just like, hey, here's video game <laughs> music. Yeah, that's true. It, it's got a lot of, like, dramatic tension, and, like, it kind of tells a story, which I really like. And it's just a cool song. I especially love, like, two minutes and on. There's, like, a really cool dramatic tension and this, like, really funky rhythm. Like, it's a cool song. I really do like this one. It's definitely my top half for the album. Any other comments on Fight with Seymour before we move on? Um, FF10 has a bunch of super goofy boss, boss themes like this, um, but I feel like this is overall a pretty faithful adaptation, so I'm into it. Not my favorite, though. Alright, well, next up on the list is a track that I think is great that everyone disagrees with me on. We've got Genova next on the list. Is it pronounced Genova, or is it J-E-N-O-V-A? I mean, I voice acting so actually no it's genova it's genova i saw advent children it's genova <laughs> but is it normally spelled with the hyphens like that yeah no. it's hyphenated oh. in this on the album it yeah that's hyphenated. what i meant like, it's hyphenated in the score as well but i think in the game it's just genova okay maybe it's trying to depict something alien and like a different you know uh, exactly way of it. using yeah. using letters yeah or maybe that's meant to be the lyrics of the song Ooh. J-E-N-O-V-A. It's fun to stay at the <laughs> J-E-N-O-V-A. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so yeah, I think this uh, is uh, one of the best pieces of music in the series. Uh, I think it really uh, exemplifies the alien vibe of Genova really well in the first half of the song. But then when it moves into the more heroic section, it really gives you like that sense of hope that you can defeat this boss, and so I think it's a very good ebb and flow, works very well as a boss theme, and I think that the melodies are ultimately retained in this version, and I like that it's got the, uh, sort of the disco drum beat as a change of pace, where I don't think this is a metal song, but I think it's great. <laughs> no. Interest, interesting choice of words, change of pace. This has the same drum beat through the entire song. <laughs> right, but this like, drum beat is different than the other drum beats. <laughs> right. And look, have you ever been to a disco club? It's all about keeping that, you know, same beat so you can shake your butt. I feel like there's a gish joke in here somewhere. <laughs> I'll chair myself I feel like out. we're talking enough about <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Remember how you said we are going to try to avoid uh, in-jokes on episodes that didn't make sense? Yeah. <laughs> I remember <laughs> nothing. Uh, hey, uh, this is a weird <laughs> piece of music. Um, I do think it's fitting for the character in the game because, you know, Genova comes from space. So it's got this kind of like weird kind of psychedelic kind of dealio going on with it with the organs and the and the keyboard stuff. Uh, mostly it's just an amped up version of the original. A bit too much keyboard for me, though, and I think I like the original version better. Um, I mean, it's it's fine for what it is, but I, it's definitely got, not going to be ranked very high on my on my list. Yeah, I, I prefer the original version as well. It's yep. super awesome in the game, and this is kind of... like It takes a really weird turn near the end that I was kind of into, but... I, I kind of wish the album had more stuff like that, but since this is the only one that has it, it's just super weird. Yeah, I think this one... Uh, so, some of these pieces got a higher ranking from me based not solely upon the album version, but, like, how strong I thought the, the composition was in general. So, mm -hmm. this one ranked highly for me because I think it's one of the best composed pieces in the series. The album version you know, that we're discussing here, I don't think is as good as the original either. But because I thought the composition was so strong and that it retained enough of that spirit is why I ranked it as high as I did. So I don't think that it's a, it's a bad version of it. Uh, I think, you know, the changes in the different instrumental breaks in this one work a lot better than in some of the other ones. Where, like, in some of the other ones, they'll be like, that's a sweet solo that doesn't fit at all with what just happened. The soloing that goes on in this piece all flows together and feels like it could have been part of the original composition. At least for me. 
Yeah, yeah. I could get, get down on that. I believe that. Any other comments on Genova before we move on? Is Steve dead? Hi. No, Steve's just waiting for the the chance to make jokes. Yeah, I mean that's all I'm here for is okay. jokes. Yeah, there, right. there's concentrating super hard on giving a shit about this. Must <laughs> care. The thing is, uh, so Steve uh, told me when listening to this is that the songs did not stand out to him as distinct, aside from three of them. Right. One was particularly bad, and two were particularly good. So when we get to those songs, he will comment on them. Otherwise, he's just here to sort of make fun of me. Right. So, I mean, my, my general take on this album is it's all good music. This genre of, like, metal covers of video game songs, I'm into. I enjoy listening to it. But I'm not interested in, like, really putting a lot of mental effort into, like, breaking it down and understanding. It's just, like, it's really good background music. It's like as a, as a programmer, this is like perfect working music. The sort of thing you just have going to help you stay focused while you do your job. It's like Gish, where I if you listen to it that. once, you're, there's no way you're going to actually remember what it sounds like. I, I know a lot of nerds who haven't necessarily beaten any Final Fantasy games, but listen to the Black Mages on loop. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah totally. Exactly. That was a, the, the very good uh, observation, Steve. <laughs> See, he's contributing. <laughs> there's science There's a pat on this. the back, buddy. I love yeah, I'm glad you're here, Steve. Too. <laughs> At least I, we're not talking about Metallica today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have direct access to the mandatory Metallica drop. It's just in the sting category. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been the Metallica drop. It was that instead. This is me, this is me hanging up now. Thank you. <laughs> well, it was good to have you. Where can we find you, where can we find lipstick online, Greg? Wait, uh, so I, I will I will say this: I am uh, open to doing more Metallica episodes as I you know recently binged the entire catalog with Caleb. So like all that is very fresh in my mind that entire catalog. But, I want to uh, do the Lulu episode. Um, I did not. I've never finished Lulu. I did not <laughs> I, actually listen I to Lulu as part of our time. It's fucking horrible. Oh, <laughs> It's a Lou Reed album, all right? It's not a Metallica album. I mean, <laughs> Lou Reed's pretty great, but also I, I haven't listened to Lou Lou in its entirety, so I'm not going to judge it. God. You, you know what? The way things are, you might love it, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have a low tolerance for avant-garde bullshit, though. Um, oh, that whole album. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you've heard me rant about Revolution Number 9, like, avant-garde bullshit does not go well with me. But you do have a huge tolerance for troll music. I, that's true. Mm. So, so avant-garde <laughs> troll music you're super into. Right, that's true. <laughs> so I guess it depends on like whether or not I view them as good trolls or not. Right. Avant-garde is really just about framing. Right. Like, do I feel like the authors of this song are attempting to make fun of me with this? Yes. If so, I'm into it. If, if the, the authors, authors of this done. song are like trying to be serious, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how, I am, that's how I am with avant-garde <laughs> that's pretty relatable honestly yeah that's cool yeah it's, it's fair it's a, it's a good assessment of high art in general I think <laughs> yes badass Lulu is the number one rated track on the Black Mages album one <laughs> <laughs> well we'll see when we get there uh, and, but next up on the list we have hey it's a song Steve cares about Hey, we've got the battle theme from Final Fantasy 6 and that's on the list AKA second from the bottom for Greg. Yep. Bottom oh, for so Victor. This battle. This is battle theme, not yep. battle scene. R correct. Battle theme. But not not this decisive is... battle, which is also for Final Fantasy. VI. Not the decisive battle. <laughs> decisive bridge fight scene theme. Yeah. Oh. Mad. All right. So this this is this is this is the main battle theme from Final Fantasy VI. Metal cover as done by the Black Mages. Which I'm pretty sure is like the single from this album, isn't it? Uh, possibly. I don't know what was released as a single. Um, this might be my least favorite main battle theme in the series. Uh, just Ooh. from a composition standpoint. Um, in the sense that um, the just like the, the melodic phrasing and like the way they choose to do it, it just it actually kind of annoys me a little bit. Um, which, you know, is possibly one reason why you know, I don't have the giant boner for six that everyone else does if I'm getting mildly annoyed with the battle theme. I think that the theme, um, it's, uh, like, in terms of, like, the scales and stuff it's using, it's a little bit closer to, like, Middle Eastern music uh, than traditional Western music or than uh, most uh, Japanese music. 
So because it's sort of following that kind of uh, Middle Eastern scale pattern, it's uh, a little bit less pleasurable to listen to as a melodic piece. And when you want something that's uh, melodic and catchy, that doesn't get annoying upon repeated listens as you're playing through the game over and over, I think that doesn't work for me as a listener in particular. I like my battle themes to have sort of a balance of desperation and heroism. It's why I rank mm. the ones from uh, 1 and 2 a little bit lower, because it's more just the desperation side of things and not the, the heroism side of things. And 6... Uh, like the like those uh, battle themes, it's pretty much all the desperation side of things, and so it's really good at building tension. And I acknowledge that. And it is it is catchy. Uh, it's a it's a well done theme, uh, but because it just it's it's sort of just always keeping that tension and never like resolving to a place where it feels like you have a chance to win the battle. It's why it doesn't grab me as a listener. But that said, I've grown to appreciate the track over time. I do enjoy it. And I think this version, I would say, is actually better than the original. It does a better job of allowing me to enjoy the melody and enjoy the entire piece. But because I didn't enjoy the original that much, so that's why I ranked it second from the bottom. So That seemed like a really long-winded way to say I didn't like it because I'm a little racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this Yet another joke about scared. death. Perplexing <laughs> some, and just plain scaring most of what the hell is that from? <laughs> Wizard people, dear reader. <laughs> what? Ever oh, fuck? What is that? It's uh, it's Brad Neely, the uh, the cartoonist uh, behind China, Illinois, and uh, the Professor Brothers. Uh, he <laughs> three re- things in a row I've never heard of. Anyway, so he's a cartoonist that had some <laughs> internet fame in the mid twenty aughts, and um, okay. he did a re-narration of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the the film uh, that synced up with the movie and you would, you know, mute the movie and you would watch this along with it. And it's just, he oh. narrates the entire the entire story in that kind of gruff voice and Harry Potter is very drunk and, oh, I and have Dumbledore is the nearly dead Dumbledore. And it's pretty great, other than the fact that he almost got sued for it. Uh, yeah, what's uh, I Island of like- Worlds? It's all. It's I've almost all the, on YouTube. I've seen the Harry Potter one. It's great. Yeah. Do you have that? I am the Destroyer of Worlds drop. I no longer have it directly. I uh, think it's just all under non non sequitur now. That's unfortunate. I am Harry fucking Potter. <laughs> That's the part I wanted. To hear. <laughs> <laughs> Send me the a link to that, Steve. Yeah. I, I have no idea what you were talking about. It sounds awesome, actually. All right. So I'm going to just go on record uh, again. As stating that I am not racist, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> just all that about, like, I don't like Middle Eastern music, it's not catchy, is just, you know, not racist. Look, I'm just saying I don't like the general melodic scales used. Look, I don't like Norwegian black metal, and it's because the racist. melody is Are you shit. racist against white people, Greg? I mean... <laughs> oh, you're actually, like, you're just Jewish enough that that's really problematic for me to say. Now I'm being <laughs> racist. Ah, uh, yeah, Thanks, man. Is the remark to be I sexist think... dribble oh. spouted by yeah! intentional, or is it just a horrible mistake? It's a horrible mistake. Please, please God, move on. I... <laughs> <laughs> what are we even talking about? <laughs> we're talking about the Sorry battle theme from that Final that Fantasy VI. <laughs> so now that we're moving yeah. past racism and sexism, what do you guys All think right. about the song, guys? <laughs> battle theme. I love this piece of music. All right, it's my one of my favorites on this album. Right. Well, Joe is less racist awesome, than I am. Creepy rendition of a great battle song. I disagree with Greg on this. Um, I uh, I love um, when uh, when they bring in a little bit of that me- Middle Eastern kind of stuff into Western music. Uh, frankly, Metallica does it a lot. Uh, Megadeth does it a lot. Like my two favorite metal bands. Uh, do it all the time. So I don't know. I love those kind of what what is the scale they use? Is it Dorian? I don't I don't I don't freaking know. It's been forever since I've studied that stuff, but it's great. It's uh creepy sounding. I like how this one's like a heavy rendition of it. I love the choral part uh that they did here, like the, the chorusy stuff. And um totally use this in one of my short films in high school. So much love. And I, I, I do want to acknowledge uh, real quick that uh, I don't dislike all integration of Middle Eastern themes into Western music. It's just <laughs> this one wasn't successful for me. Like uh, Seduction of the Innocent from Carnival of Souls, I liked quite a bit. Uh, Holy Wars, Megadeth, 
is a great incorporation of those themes in admittedly a slightly spinal tapish way, but <laughs> they still <laughs> they still did it really great. So I'm not against it completely, but I think as the melodic structure of this piece, it just doesn't work for me personally as a listener. I believe I believe what you're trying to say is it's it's not your personal musical background, so it's. I'm just saying, as a slightly it. Jewish person, I am just. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah, but you're from Cleveland, right? That's true. You're 100 percent Cleveland, like 25 percent Jewish. Ugh. You saying I'm 100 percent Cleveland really hurt my soul, but deep down I know it's true. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. It was a mean thing to say, but you know the lulls. Uh, that's fair. I, I'm at. That is actually one of the like most hurtful things you've said to me in our entire friendship, and I'm like seriously like. Re- that's like a really good dig. <laughs> Someone else talk. Damn it. Uh. Um, I didn't like think- that they slowed it down. Hmm. Versus the original? Yeah. I'm not even a huge fan of the original, but, like, I love Final Fantasy VI, but I can kind of take or leave this battle theme. But I, I didn't like that they slowed it down. I liked how their synth horns sounded, though. I thought the drums sounded fake on this one. They sounded very digitally crappy. Spoilers! They were. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I just didn't notice it much on the other songs, but this one, it really bothered me. This got the lowest score on my instrumentation, uh, you know, criteria or whatever. But I did really like the bridge on this song. And I don't know, it felt pretty metally sounding. And that might have been that sort of Middle Eastern influence, possibly. I don't know. All right, so Steve, you're not racist. How did you feel about this one? <laughs> no, this is, uh, I, I... Just bleep this whole part out. <laughs> Greg's the one who ultimately edits it, so he could if he wants to. Uh, uh, look, I am, first off, not going to edit this episode for a while because I'm busy doing a film score. Second, nah, I'm not bothered to edit this. Right. So I, I do enjoy this one. I rank this one second from the top, mostly just because uh, between this and the other one that I liked, it felt a little bit basic to make this one number one. So that was what sort of settled the tie. Hipster. Like, like no, I'm not picking the single as the, as the number one. But... No, yeah, I, I really, I really like the song. I, again, I like all of this album. These are these are fun heavy metal arrangements of video game songs, which is always something I enjoy listening to. Um, I think this is the one I was most familiar with going into it, in that it was used in the most AMV hells. That and maybe I'm a lion, <laughs> but we didn't do that album. Nope. Well, any other comments on the battle theme from Final Fantasy VI before we move on? All right. Next up on the list, we have my number one song on the album coming smack dab in the middle of the ranking. We have Those Who Fight Further from Final Fantasy VII. This one's wow. good. <laughs> All right. I'll be the, I'll be the naysayer here. I, I like this piece of music. I like every piece of music on this freaking album except for the Seymour symbols. Um, <laughs> but uh, I love the rhythm guitar stuff here. And uh, I like the original piece a lot. This version of it didn't really set me on fire. Uh, the guitar solos are bitching. The drums are pretty cool. But I don't know. I kind of walk away from this piece going, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. So I agree that's, to this. My, that's my take. I agree. The solos were really awesome. I wasn't insane about the guitar tones but the solos themselves were awesome the organs i thought like that organ sound was really cool and just the use of arpeggios was really interesting it was like a i don't know really dynamic type of song but to me the downfall of the song was like the rhythm just kind of felt messy i don't know if they were i don't know if something was like slightly out of sync or if i just didn't quite i don't know vibe with it or something but yeah, I don't know. This got the lowest score for uh, the rhythm on my rhythm category. <laughs> but yeah, it's a cool song. I, I still like the song. Uh, Victor, do you want to go next? Sure. I, I think this one this one is solid. This is kind of closer to what I wish the baseline quality of this album was. <laughs> Um, I feel like 7 and 8 in particular translate really well to what they're doing here. So I kind of actually wish there was maybe more from each of those games. But I I think this one's solid, although I didn't have a lot to say about it in these notes. All right, so now it's time for me to to gush about this. So 
this uh, was very difficult. There was uh, the number one and two uh, in my personal ranking were very, very close, and I went back and forth on them quite a bit. Uh, my number two, spoilers, ended up winning this, uh, this ranking, and so I'll talk about that when we get to it. This piece in particular, in terms of composition, I think is one of the strongest things Nobuo Uematsu has ever done. Uh, I will say, without hesitation, the guitar riff at the beginning of this song is one of the greatest guitar riffs of all time. And yes, it is a troll. Oh. The original version of this guitar riff is just a MIDI guitar. But I think that riff is as potent and powerful as anything by ACDC, anything from KISS, anything from Metallica. I think it is that good. I understand I am the minority in that opinion. Yes, I'm saying that riff is a classic, classic riff. I think it is an amazing, amazing riff. It was great in Doom. Yeah, it was great in Doom. But I, but I think, uh, like, in terms of just uh, the composition of it, especially, uh, you know... The, the, the way that the different moving parts are working in the song and the use of counter melody is absolutely brilliant in that the way it's, uh, it's building tension uh, and like moving back and forth between desperation and heroism, really giving you that great back and forth dynamic, building as a piece, uh, you know, uh, reaching these large emotional crescendos. Uh, and, you know, uh, I, I probably listen to a lot more... Uh, Actually, I don't know necessarily, but I feel like I probably listen to more 70s uh, prog rock bands than most of the panelists, just because it's not very trendy amongst millennials to be listening to a ton of Yes and, uh, you know, Deep Purple, that kind of stuff. So I'm very familiar with the musical influences that were brought in to make this piece. And so it sounds like sort of a mixture of Van Halen and Deep Purple, but with the melodic sensibilities of John Williams. And so when you combine all of those things together, I think you get just a phenomenal, phenomenal composition. And I will acknowledge that this version is not as good as the MIDI original in that uh, the guitar solo, while good, doesn't flow with the rest of the piece. It hurts the composition a little bit, but because the original core of the writing is so strong, despite my minor gripes with some of the arrangement choices not making it shine as much as it could, just the way that that piece was composed, then the different parts and how well everything goes together, especially like once I started to notice the different counter melodies and how they work together and building tension, it's like musically absolute genius and kind of mind blowing that he was able to make everything work in such a way where it's akin to the Beatles song Help with the brilliance of the counter melody working together to make it that much more epic. It's truly just a phenomenal composition uh, it's not the f composition I have the most emotional attachment to. Uh, that's actually the what will end up being number one. So I have more nostalgia for the number one than for this song. But just the writing is so damn good, I had to put it at number one just because of how great the composition was. So yeah, that's my thoughts. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. I, feel I like, like the original version. Oh, sorry. I go ahead. Bet. I was going to say, make snarky jokes. So if you got something re meaningful to say, uh, I, I see the floor. I just said I love the original. I was just, you know, this this version, I don't know. But go ahead, Steve. Go ahead, was, make your joke. I was going to say, I should have ranked this one higher than <laughs> I did because this is the one that has a, an Amanda LaPree slash Professor Shy Guy defunct side project named after it. There you go. Uh, I mean, just, the, just the world needs more of those. <laughs> Speaking of a uh, you know heavy metal that sounds like video games, uh, Amanda Labrie. All uh, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she plays for Andrew WK now. Hey, that's a good gig. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't think she's doing much solo stuff just because she's getting paid to play for Andrew WK. Once again, a, a good gig. All of our friends have better gigs than we do. Like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm just I'm just playing arenas with Ace Freely in Europe. Oh, yeah, I'm playing with Accept. Oh, yeah, I'm playing with Andrew WK. What are you guys doing? Uh, you, we're doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of, a couple of white dudes with some microphones doing a podcast. Yeah. All right, so... Is, isn't that the joke, that is right? The, what do you call a group the of... Scientific, 
Yeah, like what do you call a bunch of crows? A murder? What do you call uh, a couple of white dudes? A podcast? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so, uh, next up on the list, we have Force Your Way from Final Fantasy VIII. This one bangs. <laughs> yes, absolute banger. I agree. I, I think uh, that uh, I, I think the eight soundtrack is underrated by Joe. Uh, I think look, just because the S tar theme is bad, it doesn't mean the rest of the soundtrack is bad. And just because uh, a couple lines in the translation of "Eyes on Me" is bad, doesn't mean the composition is bad. Um, in my opinion, so I think. Oh no. Uh, look, I love Faye Wong. Uh, she's a good actress. She's a good singer. That song is atrocious. I, I think. Uh, I think if it had a, if it just that first line was translated better instead of whenever sang my song. Yes, that is a terrible <laughs> translation. Absolutely. But if it was when I would sing my songs, if you just change that one line, I think it would just work much better. And I think the melody in that piece is very strong. I don't know, man. Honestly, like the tone of that song, I don't mind the melody on that piece when it's played on a piano. Like a piano. It sounds good, actually. There's a bit in Final Fantasy VIII where it's played on a piano and, like, where, like I think it's the hotel part. But as a song like with that orchestration on it and with that just like cheese just going through the cheese grater <laughs> it, it, oh it's too it's over the top love song kind of thing with bad lyrics with a Chinese singer singing English it's all just like bad it's it doesn't sound good i i can't i can't any part of that song even if the stupid lyrics were fixed i can't i can't deal with it. that song makes me sick to my stomach when i hear it it's so like i have a visceral like physical reaction to that <laughs> song when i first heard that song played in like the spaceship scene in Final Fantasy VIII, like I was into the game, man. I was like into these characters, <laughs> and you could not have picked a worse thing to do. And you know what? One there was one guy on the internet who totally had the exact same reaction of the. I think it was it was one of the guys from like the it's your host, Psycho it's your co-host Caleb Schweiss <laughs> <laughs> and Caleb Schweiss. But there was a guy from the band Psycho Stick, I believe, has a blog. <laughs> yeah. I, I was reading his stage. like Final Fantasy VIII like blog thing, and he was talking about how it's like its reaction to when that scene came up, and I was like, "That's the exact same thing. The song is terrible." Sure, I got to, I have to invite oh. him on the Nets podcast then. Oh God, fuck! Oh, I think the the website I used to go on it all the time. It's like plud dot com. It's like P L U H. Yeah, no, I remember he, uh, he was doing stick song. He was doing uh, let's plays of uh, Final Fantasy One. I, I remember uh, maybe like a year ago. So yeah, I, I I remember that the guy was a fan of the series. Oh, as a fan of Psycho Stick, by the way, separately found the song "Beer Is Good" and found Final Fantasy Eight and found out that there was like a connection there. <laughs> that was a good. Moment. Yeah, I think uh, uh, "Minimum Rage" is one of the best songs for anyone who has ever worked a crappy job. Uh, just uh, brilliant piece my of music. Piece of shit is our two-ton paperweight i think is what the song is called that song is amazing because it's exactly what having a shitty car is like but so interesting we <laughs> haven't actually talked about uh this piece yet we've talked about a whole bunch <laughs> of other different songs than oh, this. Yeah, okay. final fantasy 8 music i've got sorry guys i got a final fantasy podcast i got a little bit of a rant on this final fantasy 8's music he hasn't talked about this enough on his show for five years i feel like <laughs> I feel like the tone that he uses in his MIDI scoring of the original game, I don't think they are like, it's. I think the instrumentations drive me nuts because I hear good melodies in there, but it's just like the tone he uses. I don't have this problem with 9 and I don't have it with 7. I only have it with 8. Like his little like rock organ thing. I don't like its use in Final Fantasy VIII soundtrack, especially in this song. And it would drive me nuts when I was, because in Final Fantasy VIII, you got to draw from enemies. You got to draw like a hundred at a time. Before I knew there was like an auto thing on the on the command thing, I would like manually go over and and like do this like uh, 
this draw function in the game and listening to that song over well, and over is, again. This isn't the one. This is the boss theme. This isn't the main battle theme. Is this the boss theme? Oh, okay. Well, either way, it's a song. I recognize it as a song I've heard about a million times that I'm not that big of a fan of the original from this one has a lot of organ as well i like the changes to force your way i like the rhythm guitar changes adds a lot to the track the bridge is very cool i'm not a fan of the original arrangement so this version was actually a really nice surprise for me but yeah i'm not a big fan of the original final fantasy 8 score unlike most final fantasy fans i realize i'm in the minority here sorry done <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool song I, I agree that the bridge is is amazing it's a really cool like change of pace from the song um and i love the main part of this song but i feel like some parts of it get a little bit into that uh cheesy zone like where it's so historic or historic <laughs> heroic where it's like you know a little bit too straight i think and it gets a little cheesy um but yeah I like the organ. I agree with that being really cool. And I got a little bit of like uh, an Avenged Sevenfold type of vibe from the guitars on this one. Like, uh, yeah, it's a good song. It's not bad. So I'm actually playing eight right now and I'm not very far. So this, there is that caveat, but so you have that honestly, song to look forward to. <laughs> no, so far I have not heard a piece of music that I didn't like. Oh, you I, I immediately. There's the bum 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 bum. bum I bum, love that. Yeah, I love that that's too. One of my favorite. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> but like, okay, it's so, so good. I, but Joe, you also you don't like Fisherman's Horizon, do you? Uh, like, other arrangements are okay. But I don't I've, like I've, the. I've heard you like you know, uh, speak very negatively about that one. And meanwhile, I go on Final Fantasy message boards, Facebook groups, and other YouTube videos. Like, yes, this is one of the highlights of the series, Fisherman's Horizon, one of the best pieces. So yeah, worst parts of that game though. So I don't know if it. Uh, <laughs> so I think I the 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 trick is I think eight. You know, talking mainly about a game that Steve hasn't played, so he's bored out of his mind right now. Um, well, I got distracted by the Final Fantasy, uh, the Psycho Stick Final Fantasy webcomic. Oh yeah, that thing's great. <laughs> need to go look for more butts. Huh. <laughs> I already found all the butts I'm interested in. That's fair. <laughs> I'm also Get like. Interested. I'm just like More. racking my brain about the math of this that I'm noticing that there is there are far too many songs in my own ranking that got as many points as the number of game they were. Like Whoa. <laughs> I gave this song eight points and I gave the one from Final Fantasy seven seven points and there's another one coming up and Greg, did you do that on purpose? No. I, I really didn't. I just like in retrospect, I probably should have just rolled with that. Be like, if the uh, like, just match them to the game. All right. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> I I think that uh, except if I, I would have had to get a fight with Seymour ten points. You're right. Well, n uh, aside from the ones you legitimately ranked, right? So and you did give a, a song legitimately ten points. So what I would say with the the soundtrack of eight or eight overall, it's a. Uh, a bunch of really good components where I think the visual design is great. I think the music is great. I think the side quests are great. I think the uh, battle mechanics are great. And um, the fact that you can just play the game as a boss rush if you know what you're doing uh, makes it a very streamlined Final Fantasy that eliminates grinding. If you know how to draw properly and uh, you don't have to spend hours drawing enemies, you just have to get some tents and turn those into Kuragas and then you can coast until you can get to draw points later on. So you don't need to spend those hours grinding enemies. That's a very inefficient way of, of drawing in Final Fantasy VIII. So the fact that you can play this game in a snappy fashion is great. The problem is the characters aren't very good and the story's not very good up until um, basically the end of disc three is when yeah, it gets ridiculously right, right. awesome. Uh, the eyes on me scene, I actually thought was very emotional and touching. Uh, so take that for what it's worth. But oh, uh, great. I'll I would actually disagree on the characters. I'm in, I'm enjoying them so far, and I know people hate Laguna, but I think he's oh, he's great. Him. Laguna's awesome. So I, I don't think that Laguna is bad. Uh, it's just I think the characters ultimately lack depth by the time you get to the end of the story, where everyone's sort of a little bit one dimensional. Like once you know who they are, that's just about it. Uh, I'm except my romantic dream. Yeah, I mean he's using it in a in a different way. You know, there's more than one dictionary definition of that, uh, Joe. Uh, romantic. 
I know. I know. <laughs> Did you know that? Part of that scene that he chose that word. <laughs> I think I think it's fine because he's trying to be uh, poetic and uh, trying to be medievally. Uh, for, trying to be medievally. Yeah, medievally. Uh, you know, with midi soundtracks and whatnot. Uh, but on on, I think I think the battle themes in eight are phenomenal. I think um, they're like exactly what I want from battle themes. Great composition, great build. Love the bridge. I think the guitars in this one. Are ones that carry the melody the uh, uh, among the best on the album. Uh, I don't think it's as good as the original. I think some of the melody gets lost in the overall piece. But when it gets to the bridge and the guitars kick in, fantastic, love it. Greg, I have a. Uh, I want to talk about eyes on me some more. So if anybody, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, just, just need to get... force your way real quick before I have a little bit of a tirade. Go ahead. I, I, I will uh, say this. We just eventually need to just do an episode where we rank the vocal themes from the games. Uh, <laughs> that's a great uh, idea. Get, get one of the Psycho Stick guys on for that. I'm in there. Uh, I'll ask like, him. I mean, the thing is, you would be surprised how easy it is to reach uh, people you're a fan of if you just tell them you have a podcast and want them on as a guest. They're like, fuck yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> that's how I got all you nerds over here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> You've been I'm bamboozled. Right. You've history, been bamboozled. Right. I tricked you into being my friend because I liked your podcast. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Eyes on me, Greg. Well, I have. I had one last thing to say about it. Go ahead. It's Go. it's quick. Uh, this is one of the few tracks on the album that felt like they were actually having fun playing it instead of just transcribing it literally from the original music. That's all. all. That's good. That's a good. Uh... A thing. Uh, hey, um, Greg. Okay. So here's the thing. I'm di I'm I'm deeply opposed to songs, and I, I'll say movies here, but it includes cutscenes to video games. Songs in movies that are on the nose with lyrics played in the background of emotional scenes. Those things drive me absolutely nuts. My least favorite one is like the end of Prince Caspian, the Disney Prince Caspian movie. There's just a song in there that makes me want to like it made me want to blow my brains out. This is the most watching recent the one. Movie. Uh, and then uh, and then the uh, the eyes on me song being played during like a love scene. It was just like, could we could we not? Mm. Thank you. To all movie people out there, can we not put songs that are on the nose that underline what we're already watching and distract us with lyrics? So I I respect that. Uh, for me, Eyes on Me wasn't distracting because it was a pop song in their world that was a hit. And uh, you heard the motif throughout the game enough where it sort of felt like an emotional climax. So it didn't seem as out of nowhere. To me, it felt like it fit in within the score, within the context of the story, and as like a popular love song where when, you know, a couple hears a popular love song that they've both been a fan of for years and they they resonate with it, that can be a very sincere emotional reaction. I've had that happen in my life where I've listened to a song that both my wife and I are a fan of, and when it comes on at like an emotional moment in our lives, it resonates with us deeper. And so I do acknowledge that it can be done in a very cheesy way. And for for you and a whole lot of other Final Fantasy fans, the eyes on me scene was cheesy. I've heard a lot of people complain about that scene. I've heard a lot of people give it praise. It's very divisive. And so I acknowledge that that does not work for everybody. It's, you know, it's not like uh, the Beatles where most people are just like, yeah, the Beatles are fucking sick. And then you get the couple outliers who are like, it sucks. I acknowledge that as divisive. I acknowledge that is not for everybody. It personally worked for me and my sensibilities. But a lot of that is based upon how I interpreted the score and, uh, you know, my personal experiences of having moments like that in my life where a song resonated with me. Uh, you know, I haven't seen Captain Marvel yet, but apparently there is some very awkward use of overly 90s songs that are very on the nose in the movie that pretty much everyone I've heard talk about it said it was cringeworthy and terrible. And I'm probably going to think it's cringeworthy and terrible when I get around to watching it. So I get it. I get why it doesn't work for you, but it worked for me. 
I'm on Wikipedia reading about the song, and I am amused by the fact that it won an award in Japan for best Western song. <laughs> they were like, yeah. this song is so yeah. American <laughs> and so good, we're going to give it an award. Yeah, I mean, look, China is west of Japan. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the B-side is the song Red Beans. So, oh, man, they should have done that on this album. It would have been great. They should have covered Red Beans, you mean? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so any other comments on Force Your Way or Eyes on Me or Final Fantasy VIII before we move on? I think it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Which of those three? All of them? Uh, the game. I, I'm, I just got Irvine, so I'm not very far, but I think it's a good time. Hey, you know, it's. I think Final Fantasy VIII is... So here's the trick is it might be lower ranked for maybe the series overall, but it's one of the best video games ever made, like on a, on a mechanics level, like the draw system. Once you figure it out, if you know what you're doing, you can beat that game very quickly and very efficiently. So because that's what we all play Final Fantasy games for, just to beat them as fast as possible. <laughs> well, no, no, Watch it's, the numbers go up. and then <laughs> That's what Joe plays them for. I'm here to get scores. Well, no, it gives you the option to play the game as a, bo a boss rush. B boss rush, if you want. You can skip the random battles, focus on exploring, focus on side content, or you can, you know, add the battles in if you want. Like, it gives you, basically, control over how you play the game. So, I think it's interesting because it's got so many high highs, but then it has so many low lows. So honestly, I think that's kind of like the quality of the game is all over the place. And I think depending on just kind of how you see things is kind of how your experience with that game is going to be. I mean, I think it's one uh, of the worst stories in the series by a wide margin. And, you know, I have a lot of critiques with it, but I think as a video game in terms of like where its graphics were for the time it was released... The quality of the music, the uh, uh, optional side content, the exploration. Uh, I mean, it is absolutely a top-notch game. As a fan of melodrama, anything featuring a dramatic sword fight where somebody explodes into birds at the end is cool by my book. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> so, all right. Are we ready to move on? All is right, it I'm safe? done talking about this great song. It's <laughs> true. It's great. <laughs> All right, so next up on the list, we are third from the top with something I ranked fourth from the bottom. We've got Dancing Mad next on the list. Joe, yeah. good choice. It's a great piece of music, man. Um, Victor, the, I'll let you slide. Proggiest, this is the most proggiest of proggy things here. Uh, love all the crazy places that this piece goes in the original and this version and the in the Distant Worlds version, which is another kind of Final Fantasy uh, album remix kind of thing. Uh, it's great. I wish it had a better chorus tone at the beginning. That's kind of one of those things hmm. where the uh, yeah. where versions of the song uh, are better. Uh, they're they're kind of better with the epicness of it. Um, but um, otherwise, like this is just a great piece of music, and uh, and I like this rendition. Although I I don't think it's quite the best one, but I'm not sure which the best one is. So. I don't know. I'll have to listen to all of them in a row and figure out which... Uh, Rank which the Dancing Mads next episode. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I mean, Steve will remember what it sounds like. <laughs> Even within this song, I feel like it's actually secretly five or six different songs that just like were too short and they just kind of mushed them all together. I kept thinking it had switched to the next song <laughs> and it was still Dancing Mad. I'm just on minute 10 of 12 or whatever. <laughs> It was crazy. It's a, such a long song, and it changes so drastically without much of a connection to the other bits. Well, it's because yeah. it's it's the final boss theme for Final Fantasy VI, and the final boss has four stages. So right. that's why it has all those different things. I just feel like and I would have it broken it up a little <laughs> for this album, maybe, into different tracks, or just picked one of the different you know stages or whatever. Have you, have you played Final Fantasy VI, Andrew? I haven't beaten it. So I haven't seen that final boss battle. Yeah, so... Um, it's fucking epic. What I will say is, um, you know, as, as someone who is more, like, in the middle of Final Fantasy VI, where I don't think it's uh, the best game in the series, and I don't think it's uh, trash. I think it's, like, you know, high mids for the series. Uh, I think it does some things very well, does some, some things not as well. 
I would say this is a it is a great piece of music, uh, but it uh, honestly it took me a long time to get into this piece. Mm. Because, okay, you got twelve minutes, right? You have twelve minutes. <laughs> uh, I think the original was twenty two minutes. Um, oh, so it's, it's so a, they got better at the boss fight. You're saying? Yeah, they the got better they at the boss fight. Version. Uh, actually, I appreciate this version because it's shorter and just kind of gets to the point more quickly than the original mm. version. Uh, I, there's there's a lot of really good moving parts in this, and I think the way that I look at this piece is uh, more akin to. Um, a, a symphony composition than necessarily a traditional video game composition. You know, Final Fantasy VI has the very famous opera scene and such in the game, and I think uh, Uematsu was taking his score to new levels of ambition in terms of the length of the compositions, the complexity, and so what you have here is something with, you know, different movements, which is something much more commonly found in traditional symphony music. I was in a symphony orchestra when I was in high school, so the structure of it is very familiar to me. Um, the original version, I thought, went on a little bit too long, and uh, the, like, the sections didn't grab me melodically with the instrumentation on the Super Nintendo. But the instrumentation here worked for me in that it made it uh, stick out more melodically. But also, it didn't really sound like a rock song until like right. 10 minutes into it when you got to the guitar solo. So it was just a very awkward in terms of its placement on the album, even though you had Genova earlier on, which is more of a disco thing. This just sounded like MIDI music that was better than a Super Nintendo, but not good enough to be on the rest of the CD. But yes. I think the, uh, it's, it's a, it's a well-written piece. It's, it's done well, but it does not fit in with the album at all. Um, you know, it's, it's a great final boss theme. I do enjoy it. I think it's very good, but I think there are better written pieces on the same album. I think the complexity of the piece and the fact that it's like, it's a good piece is why people, um, you know, praise it. But I think it's, it gets extra play, praise for its complexity and not just based upon its quality, uh, in, in my opinion. And I mean, that's I really why I liked, liked it. Sorry. Go I ahead. really liked the first third of it, but it just kept going for so long. Like, the, How Steve feels like about a, these JRPG soundtracks. Like, oh, it's still going. <laughs> <laughs> and at least this only has the 10 songs as opposed to, like, you know, Chrono Trigger or something where it's like you have to talk about so many different. You know, you guys would, for ranking that, went through a lot of work. Whereas this was pretty simple. Just this one song didn't really seem to fit on the album to me. Although I did like a lot of the instrumentation and stuff. It was just like, it's just, I don't know. There's a lot, you go through a lot with this. It feels like you're actually playing a video game. Like, I don't know, just kind of dragged on for me. <laughs> That's the worst summary of playing video games I've ever heard. It feels like playing a video game just drags on. Look, JRPGs <laughs> aren't fun. We all know they aren't fun. We're, we're there because we're like, man, the story is supposed to move me emotionally. And like, oh shit, I've already played six of these Final Fantasies. Now I just got to complete all of them because I'm a completionist. Damn it. Only half of them yeah. are good. I just mean where it's like whether you like the song or not, you're going to hear it a hundred more times over the next five hours you know it, i don't know no not this one <laughs> no yeah i guess you're right not this one this at one all, is like i need to beat this, this boss so i can stop listening to this fucking song <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i think this one rules i although no, it's good I'm, my, I'm, I'm being a troll largely <laughs> in my in my notes here i say i could see someone who is not familiar or not a fan of the game not being into it yes, but for me it's me. like it's the absolute like it's the perfect ending to this game that I think is basically perfect. Well, maybe not perfect, but it's my favorite Final Fantasy. So, I yeah, it rules. This is, I would agree, not my favorite version of this song. I would take the original one, like, from the game, or even the overclocked remix version over this. But, I ha I, you know, I got to give it up for one of my favorite boss themes of all time. Do we have any other comments on Dancing Mad before we move on? Steve, you ranked I'm this as your number one. I'm done talking about this iconic song. Yeah, I ranked this as number one, largely because this is the most distinct of the songs. This is the one... So there were a couple spots... Yeah, because like, it's long. Okay, this one's starting to drag a little <laughs> bit. But this one had the most like interesting changes and the most variety to things. Like Everything else is a little bit of the same sort of idea of just like a metal version of the Final Fantasy song, whereas this is the one that, you know has the most variety to it is the is the most 
new thing you hear on this once you've heard the first two songs. That's very true. It just stood up, stood out like a sore thumb for me. Like I was kind of, you know, grooving and like enjoying the album until every time Dancing Mad came up, I'm like, oh, this thing doesn't belong here. Like it should be, you know, uh, critiqued on its own merits as a separate piece. It doesn't flow with the album whatsoever. Even Genova, I think, flows better than this because at least that's like what I would consider a a single track of music. I don't Not know. <laughs> You know what I compare it to? It's like, um, like Hemispheres by Rush. <laughs> like this is this is the super long, indulgent track. But you know what? Limelight's just better. Somewhere between <laughs> Hemispheres and Thick as a Brick. Yes, <laughs> somewhere in between. Sorry, did you say that there was a song that? Are you are you suggesting that other songs by Rush aren't self indulgent? Uh, some of them are barely self-indulgent yeah, at all. Yeah, some of them are just oh! like, here's a, here's a pop song. Working man is just like, I go to a job and I come home and drink beer. I'm With a working man. I mean, it's got a self-indulgent guitar, so it's like I a five-minute solo, dude. I mean, it's a little a little self-indulgent. <laughs> but like, no, Limelight, I would say, is not very self-indulgent. Uh, like, they, uh, like, their singles, like subdivisions, like their pop singles are not very self-indulgent. They're just like, here's a catchy four-minute pop song that we sold to radio. A, the one I hear the most is Tom Sawyer, which is plenty self-indulgent. Well, yeah. yes. I mean, Tom Sawyer is self-indulgent, but I don't think... I mean, you really can't, like, talk about the brilliant ideas of the philosopher of, uh, of our era, uh, Ayn Rand, in a non-self-indulgent way. That's true. Uh, <laughs> the fact that Rush or Rand George is always something I, like, kind of forget about. I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But they're, like, Canadian Rand George, so they're super nice about it. Right. <laughs> They're like capitalism is the best, but boy, this uh, this socialized medicine thing sure is pretty neat. Hey, <laughs> get some poutine. It's okay. We can eat a lot of it because our health insurance will take care of heart disease. Hey, yo. Also, <laughs> things are very far apart, so it's a lot of walking. I'm right. told Neil Peart has actually <laughs> mellowed a lot about that kind of thing. Oh, he really has. Uh, you know, I, I realize I could take this down a very dark road, so I'm going to just move on to the next track. I don't know if he's mellowed about people calling him Neil Pert, but... Uh, oh, good uh, plosive there, buddy. Yeah, you don't need a, a pop filter. It's okay. Those are the ones that are going to Skype. The ones that are being recorded don't have the plosives. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so only you guys get to... That's the advantage of being live in the studio with us, is you get to hear the plosives. Live. <laughs> that's the Lipstick Generation Guarantee. The Lipstick Generation Podcast ASMR Hour. <laughs> Gross. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna move on. So we're at the, we're at the number two song on the ranking. We don't have a drop for I'm done talking about Steve's creepy voice. Uh, <laughs> we can. All right, uh, mark this down, Steve. In this, in there, <laughs> I'm done talking about. I'm done talking about Steve's creepy voice. <laughs> All right, next, next, next song. Up, next on the list, an iconic song from the series. We've got Clash on the Big Bridge. Which is from Final this Fantasy V, and I gave it five points, Greg. <laughs> Whatever. This was, wasn't number one. This was my number two. That was pretty cool. I mean, it's this number two so in the ranking, great. so that's a pretty respectable place for it. Uh, I mean, I would mm -hmm. say out of all the, uh, the battle themes, you know, this is the one I think reappears in most of the games. You know, you've got the prelude, you've got the main theme, you've got the chocobo theme, and uh, to the lesser extent, the Moogle theme. But of the different songs that have reappeared in the games, I think this is one of the highest ones because Gilgamesh is like, what's up? Making another cameo. Hi, everybody. Um, it's, a, it's a very catchy, memorable song. I knew the, game, the song before I played 5, was very familiar with just this as a composition. Uh, and so I didn't even get to Gilgamesh in 5 until, like, last year. So I've known this song for years and hadn't experienced it in its proper context until somewhat recently. But it's a, it's a great composition. Um, maybe, yeah, I know, it, it, it's good. It's good. It's catchy. I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. Um, I think it's, uh, I love this piece of music. And um, this version of it has a very good guitar tone. Really dug it. Sounds yes. a bit like Def Leppard uh, in a good way. I love all the like guitar, dual harmony kind of things. And the lead guitar work wins this one. So I'm a big, I'm a big fan of the guitar work on this song. Uh, yeah, I guess. Song, 
Oh, I like it a lot. I got some sort of Dragon Force vibes from that guitar <laughs> in this song, <laughs> which is a good thing. Like, there's that sort of fantasy, like, up tempo. I, I don't know. It's a it's a good comparison for a Final Fantasy like metal album. Uh, I really love the melody on this one too, but I don't have that much to say about it. It's just really cool, cool bridge, nice guitar tones. Boom. I would say this sort yeah. of reminds me of the F Zero soundtracks, the more recent ones. Uh, just in terms of the production and style, this feels like it would fit in very well in an F Zero game if it was just a little bit faster. Uh, this song rules, and this version is quite good. And I, similar to Greg, I hadn't uh, played or beaten Final Fantasy V until last year. And A, it's way better than its reputation would have you believe. And B, this song rules and this section from the game rules. Oh yeah, it does. Really does. And yeah, this is like this is this I'm not very hot on this album overall, but this one gets an official thumbs up from me. Yeah, and as far as Final Fantasy V, like I had I had played the game uh as as a preteen. Like I had played pretty much all of the first 10 games like before the age of 13. So I was very familiar with the series, but I hadn't beaten most of them until uh, having a Final Fantasy renaissance uh, in in recent life, where it's like, oh, I'm not uh, gigging as much because we're recording and rebranding. Guess I've got some time to play some JRPGs. <laughs> Final <laughs> Fantasy renaissance was my favorite subseries. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool, actually. Yeah, I, I mean, like that, that does actually sound very much like the sort of thing they would name a game. Yeah, oh God, it totally does. It's, yeah. it's another, like another game for Joe to play. <laughs> I think Final Fantasy Renaissance sounds like their Metroidvania type game. <laughs> and that, that would, would make a million sweet. dollars. Right. Or it's I don't a, think they would they wouldn't use like real English words like like Renaissance though. It'd be some made up. It'd be like conversion. all the the bullshit <laughs> names like an eleven, like Vanadeel. <laughs> that right. doesn't sound like bullshit. <laughs> Final Fantasy Renaissance. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Final Fantasy Renaissance. Uh, dude, yeah. <laughs> dude, dude, Kime. Yeah. Dude, dude, Kime two thirteen. <laughs> and the the box Versus. the box art is just a picture of Renoa, but uh, like kind of dressed as the Mona Lisa. <laughs> oh, Everything about this sounds terrible and something like they would definitely do. <laughs> it would suck ass, but they would do it. <laughs> it's actually a tower play. defense game, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh no! All right. So I really hope they don't listen to our podcast because when that game comes out, we're all going to feel so terrible. They already made a tower defense one, Steve. Joe played it. Yeah, <laughs> I played. Literally a tower. <laughs> Literally. It's, a first, it's a first-person shooter. So wait. <laughs> You're defending the tower, so does that yeah. mean that you're like you're you're God and they're the heroes who are coming to kill you? He didn't play those games. You're a princess, and you have a tower, and you got to keep building the tower up. And each floor has people that defend the tower. If they get to the top of the tower, you lose. Are you, and are you, oh, sorry. Like they're like little Final Fantasy characters on the way up not uh, not playable characters but like uh the monsters and stuff very honestly like a really fun game but like crazy that that's a final like that that's a game i it's just insane but <laughs> so wait you're building a tower full of monsters to stop who uh, people okay so yeah you are like you are the, the boss who turns out to be God and also the devil at the same time, who needs to be vanquished in order to bring peace back to the world. Yeah, but you stop him from getting to the top of the tower. <laughs> yeah, okay. So. Yeah, you're, yeah you're, you're like a bad princess. And then at the end, of course, you have a change of heart. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah. You're a bad princess. Final Fantasy, bad princess. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't sound like a game they would make. No. Oh. No, instead, it's Final Fantasy, My Life as a Dark Lord. Here, here's where it is. It's a Final Fantasy X-3, Bad Princess. Uh, uh. <laughs> I know uh. that game is already, like, pictured in your head, and you're... Uh. <laughs> they, they, replace, they replace the battle system with a massage mechanic. 
<laughs> so it's also a sequel to Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. There's a massage mechanic in 10 too. Is there really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, I thought it was all like dress based combat. There's a oh, mini game. So, <sighs> so bad. <laughs> All right, guys, I can't think about this anymore. All right, so let's get let's go with the. Hey, we're at the number one song. Let's go through this ranking. Hey, guys. Hey, oh. Hey, oh. From the hey, bottom hey, to the oh. top. Battle scene from Final Fantasy One. Battle scene from Final Fantasy Two. <laughs> Fight with Seymour from Final Fantasy Ten. Should be called Battle with Seymour. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Genova. Battle with Genova. from Final Fantasy Seven. E-A-T-F-T-F. Battle theme from Final Fantasy VI. Those who fight <laughs> further from Final Fantasy VII. Battle further. Yeah, further. <laughs> uh, force your way from Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> Dancing mad from Final Fantasy VI. Clash on the big bridge from Final Fantasy si- Final Fantasy V. But the best song on the self-titled Black Mage's debut album, according to this panel of experts and Steve's random chaotic votes. Shop theme. <laughs> yes, the shop theme. Make, it a, yeah. make a surprise comeback. <laughs> Steve, play that beauty for us. <laughs> oh, no, I don't actually have it specifically mapped to anything. I just have an annoying category uh, somewhere. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, uh, don't even have that anymore. Oh, no. Oh, no. So the number one song on the album is actually The Decisive Battle from Final Fantasy. A- actually, wait, hold on. It's Eyes on Me from Final Fantasy VIII. In a surprise <laughs> upset with a steel chair knocking out the decisive battle, Eyes on Me. <laughs> taking the victory. The Megadeth version. <laughs> yeah, the Megadeth version of Eyes on Me. A shocking upset, but, I mean, Dave Mustaine, uh, man of many talents, um... Uh, Dave Mustaine's all, eyes on shop. We're theme. all wishing him a speedy recovery from cancer so he can continue making these awesome metal covers like Eyes on Me, perhaps one of the best Megadeth song, if not the best Megadeth song. <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> one of the best. That's for sure. Oh, God. But you know what? To, to, uh, let's, let's talk about the decisive battle. We'll get to Eyes on Me in a moment uh, about how great that is. But we'll talk about the number two song, <laughs> Decisive Battle. Final Fantasy VI, a, a classic of the series. Uh, who would like to go first in discussing this? Greg, I'm noticing that you made me give this one six points. <laughs> that's it's my re- observation. It's really a coincidence. Uh-huh. A happy accident, just like my existence. Oof. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nobody uh, wants to comment on that. I'll go first. I'll go first. Because uh, I have barely any notes on this one because I liked it so much. Thing is, like the more you like it, you just go, "Wow, that was great." Yeah. Cool. Move on. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so I put Pantera question mark because of the guitars right at the beginning. Definitely had like a bit of a like a scoopy sort of edge to it. I really liked that. Say, fuck yeah, huge sounding, a great guitar tone, great harmonies, great piece of music. Period. Boom. And uh, those were my thoughts on Decisive Battle. It's great. Andrew, you ranked this pretty high, despite, uh, you, so you played six, but didn't beat it? Right. And I enjoyed it. I just, I never got to the final boss fight with Kefka. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a, this is a cool game. I just, the, like, driving fast guitars, I love the sounds, and I love the tempo of the guitars, and the rhythm was kind of, like, uplifting and really cool. Um, I felt like they kept changing the like effect pedals or the synthesizer sounds again. Like just the noises changed a lot through this one, but I didn't mind it um, as much as an earlier song. But yeah, it's it's an awesome, awesome song. I feel like it has enough variety. I was kind of, I don't know, expecting to see more often in this where they just kind of repeated the same thing over and over again because it's a video game soundtrack, which they tend to like need to be flexible as far as the length. Um, or just constantly looping, but on this they would at least like mix up the sounds and the effect pedals, and made it, it sounded really awesome. I, I love the song; it's great. I had it ranked for number three, so I'm not mad with this one winning. I'm happy about that actually. And so, I, Victor, you like Final Fantasy VI a lot. This is your favorite Final Fantasy. You rank this one more towards the middle. How do you feel about it uh, winning this ranking? Uh, I. I found that to be very interesting. I do like this one. This is another one that I sort of wish was the baseline quality of this whole album. 
And I like that they don't just play the song verbatim. They little like there's a couple of extrapolations on like some melodic stuff near the beginning and like once it kind of loops around they kind of do that again so i like that they actually play around with this one and uh yeah i i like this one a lot it's very solid i feel like it's a pretty good representative of what i wish this album was instead of what it is so i'm not i guess i'm a little surprised at one especially since on the last panel i was on my fifth place also won that one huh so that's that's a very easy way for me to start predicting what's going to win. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I think is most in the middle. <laughs> the, the middle rises to the top. Yeah. So, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I don't know if I had anything. I just needed to make another noise. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's why I have a soundboard, just so if I'm like, I need to make sounds. As Dumbledore ponders with his gigantic brain. Oh, I feel better. <laughs> All right, so I rank this at number two, uh, which, it, you know, might surprise some people because a lot of people just think, oh, Greg's a six hater, and he just he just wants to be contrarian and rip on six. And There's like, three songs from six. You can't hate them all. Uh, <laughs> and the thing is, uh, six is one of the greatest video games of all time. It's, you know, the Final Fantasy series just contains a bunch of what I consider to be some of the greatest games of all time. Six is one of them. Uh, this is one of the best boss themes in the series. Quite possibly the best boss theme in the series. Definitely up there. I feel like this is a song that actually I think from the Six soundtrack isn't talked about enough. I hear a lot of people talk about different pieces from the Six soundtrack, including the main battle theme, Dancing Mad, the opera scene... Uh, and a whole bunch of other musical pieces. And I feel like this one gets lost in the shuffle on online discussions that I've seen. And I'm like, oh, you guys are forgetting to talk about what is by far the best piece of music from the game, which is this composition. Uh, I think it is... Uh, so th the beginning of this version, where it has kind of that, that bluesy intro with the synth pad underneath it, it's very tasteful uh, and like very soft. And then when it kicks into the rocking section, you get pumped. Uh, fantastic melody for what I would call the verse, and one of the most emotive, powerful choruses, what I would call it, the, the, the additional section of any boss theme in the series. Uh, and so composition-wise, I think there are a couple pieces, a couple battle themes in the series that I think are better. Uh, I think the main battle theme from Seven and the boss theme from Seven are better. But as far as um, pieces from the series that I have a visceral, emotional reaction to, uh, this is probably number one for me in the entire series. Uh, it's going to get less jokey for a second, so I apologize for getting super serious and dark in advance. But uh, a as people know, I had a, a little bit of a rough childhood. Uh, <laughs> yeah, j just a touch. Just a touch. Yeah, a little I, bit of getting stabbed. I, I love your jokes, by the way. <laughs> like, oh, Greg's going to talk about getting stabbed and raped. Time for me to <laughs> laugh. <laughs> but that's that's what friendship is. Right. Um, if I can't laugh at your terrible, terrible trauma, which continues to affect your life to this day, what can I laugh that's at? That's fair. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, the thing is, the Final, Fa Final Fantasy games were one of the few sources of light in my childhood. Um, a source of inspiration, a source of hope. Uh, you know, and things like Dragon Ball and, like, Batman and other things, too, were just, like... The idea of heroism and taking on forces bigger than you to make the world better and to make, you know, the lives of those around you better is something that resonated with me deeply. And so uh, when I was on a message board one time, I didn't realize I was living in an abusive household, but then just casually talking about my day, like, hey, guys, here's what I did today. Uh, my friends on the message board said, oh, you know, that's like totally fucked up and illegal, right? Like you need to call the cops and like get out of that abusive situation. And so when you're surrounded by abuse, you get a little bit brainwashed and you don't realize the situation you're in until someone from the outside sort of shakes you and wakes you up. And so as soon as I realized the situation I was in, and yes, I am getting to a point as to how this relates to the song, um, I came up with a plan with my friends on uh, getting my stepdad caught by the cops the next time he was abusive towards uh, my family, where uh, we had a code word where I would call them up. I would say the word paladin because I was a Final Fantasy nerd and I thought four was the shit. And everyone was supposed to come over to my house with weapons to hold him off until the cops came. And, you know, as a kid, I fantasized about finally defeating my stepdad, taking him down, and obtaining freedom for myself. 
And this was the song in my head. This was the battle theme for me achieving freedom in life, for achieving happiness, for taking on a villain. This was the song I associated with that plan as I strategized, figured out how I would use my weapon, which uh, for me was just going to be a metal rod, uh, and like how I would best use it, how the terrain of the house was set up so that we could best restrain him. This was the song in my head. Obviously, this doesn't have the same meaning for everyone else, because no, not all of you went through my specific experience. Uh, you know, it's kind of the magic of music. People have different experiences with different songs that aren't necessarily the composer's intent at all. But because I have that nostalgic feeling, and because I recognize just the sheer quality of the composition, I ranked it number two. But even with my extreme nostalgia, I do acknowledge that, yeah, the battle themes from Seven are still, like, actual better pieces musically. But yeah, there's my rant on the decisive battle. It sounds like it was a decisive battle of some sort, right? I mean, look, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got away. I did okay. Jeez. Wow, man. That's like a real-life boss battle yes, setup right that's, there. Like that's strategizing. why I had a boss theme for it. Yeah, <laughs> dang. Like, I did all the grinding, made sure my inventory was good, set up my party beforehand. <laughs> and stocked up on potions? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Greg, why do you have a like? Why, why do you have a pocket full of feathers right now? <laughs> oh, I got a plan. In case one of you dies. In case one of you dies, I've got a fucking feather. <laughs> <laughs> so and yeah, that was the story of how Greg lost a childhood friend. <laughs> Yeah, hey, so I mean, uh, that shows you the the power of the internet, though, that you're just like casually on message boards, and they're like, "Oh, let's uh, get you out of there. Like, let's change your life." That's dang, man. That's powerful. Yeah, and I think that's just you know, it's sort of a mentality I've sort of taken throughout my entire life of just um, a bad situation rather than just letting it consume my life. Being like, "Okay, how do I get out of this?" So you know, there was a time when I had to climb out of homelessness, you know, living in Cleveland in the winter without a place to stay, sleeping under a tree one night when I had no place to go, and just, you know, climbing out of poverty and not refusing to give up. So, like, that's just a core part of my being. And honestly, this is kind of a uh, decisive song in a way where before that I was very uh, defeatist, give up, kind of a depressed kid where just I assumed my life was going to be terrible for the rest of my life. Uh, but then when people told me, you need to get out of the situation, like, when I realized the situation I was in was wrong, it wasn't just, it wasn't the way the world was supposed to be, not everyone was going through that, when that clicked as, this is not correct, this isn't the way it's supposed to be, I made the decision, I am going to change it because it's not supposed to be like this. Isn't what ultimately happened with that that your mom caught wind of the plan and said, oh, shoot, this actually is a serious situation and got you and your sister out of there? What actually happened was she found out about the plan and didn't want to be in the midst of combat. She's <laughs> like, you know what? Uh, I should probably, because she knew she wouldn't be able to stop me from it uh, because she would be too busy getting hit. Uh, so she's like, you know what? Uh, I should probably just bounce before like this gets really chaotic. And it, you know, it didn't come to that, but we were ready. We practiced. We trained. Like, we did our grinding. We were we were ready to throw down. <laughs> Greg used elaborate heist scheme. It was tangentially effective. Hey, it ended up working in the long run. It worked in an unexpected way where we didn't have to fight. But, you know, we were ready. And I am very confident, as someone who's been in a lot of fights in my life, uh, the training that we did and how much better we got with our weapons, which... Like, honestly, we were pretty fucking dangerous. Like, we, it, we, it would honestly be more difficult for us to not kill him. <laughs> uh, but we, we got good at it, and I got out of the situation. So, hey, mission accomplished as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. That needs to be an enemy in the next uh, Final Fantasy. Ten-year-old with a chunk of rebar. <laughs> 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 fucking mess you up, man. <laughs> I was gonna say you probably you probably didn't have to train so hard if you guys had just played triple triad and refined some cards. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Stand back, Bernie. I have a blue eyes white dragon. <laughs> <laughs> On a related note, uh, so 
the uh, Final Fantasy podcast, no one can know about this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who, c- who couldn't make it today? Um, <laughs> They, uh, on one of their recent episodes, said, "Tell, d- don't just tell a friend about the show, tell an enemy. So I messaged my stepdad on Facebook and told him to listen to no one oh. can know about this. He hasn't gotten back oh. to me. <laughs> but I did it for the lulls, guys. I found wow. him. I'm like, oh, this is the, the man who should be in prison for a number of crimes. Alright, I've got a good joke. The things I do for the lulls. <laughs> wow. Do you give him a time code, too? Or? No, I just said, like, hey, you should check out this Final Fantasy podcast. They told me to tell an enemy, and you were the first one I thought of. Wow. Wow. I have still not listened to a single episode of that show, by the way. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's, it feels weird telling, like, my friend who hosts a Final Fantasy podcast about how great this other Final Fantasy podcast is, but... Right, he's so used to telling <laughs> enemies, he feels uncomfortable yeah, telling friends. It's so weird for me to tell my friends about this show, like, because I'm used to telling mortal enemies who, like, I battled for years of my childhood and affected all these psychological scars. Quick, call Greg an asshole so he can tell you about the podcast. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad it's good. A lot of people have told me it's good. I'm, I'm glad there's going to be another show out there to uh, <sighs> to beat us, I guess. So. <laughs> a big shoes to fill. I, the thing is, yeah. I think that their show, I, I don't think there's any way they can actually go through the entire series, like it's main series only with those guys. Because the way their show is set up, like they're going to be playing Final Fantasy VII for like a year of the show. Jeez. So, like, they have 46 years ahead of them. Right, so there's like they're they're gonna stop, stop giving a shit at a certain point, but there's yeah, no way probably. they're gonna be like into their 80s, being like fuck yeah, Crystal Chronicles, man. Like, that's, just, <laughs> that's just not happening. They will not say fuck yeah, I promise. <laughs> I, 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 and it has nothing to do with them being in their 80s. It has to do with that game. If right. you told me there was an octogenarian who was you know cussing out Final Fantasy games online, I would check it out. <laughs> that does sound fun. Playing some fucking Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles over here. It's multiplayer, man. You multiplayer. Kids, you kids these days with your immersive virtual reality experiences. Back in my day, we had to hold a controller, and it was sharp and pointy. Oh my god! <laughs> See, by, by the time they play Crystal Chronicles, they'll have a VR remake. And, uh, you know, you'll be playing through the game. VR will be so good that, like, you, you'll be able to have smells in the game and you'll, like, have trouble breathing and keep complaining about miasma, miasma. These sprites <laughs> are giving me motion sickness. So, yeah, they're, oh. they're, they're not going to This all sounds series. amazing. I really want to listen to this. I'm excited for uh, No One Can Know About This, you know, 60-year anniversary. Yeah, that's going to be a really, really great... Uh, Some great pod. Some great pod because podcasts will still be a relevant form of entertainment. Then I'm sure. I mean, there'll be virtual reality, right? We'll get to like be in the room watching them play the game in virtual <laughs> reality. <laughs> like, wow! It's something in the future in VR. I can see a couple of nerds playing Final Fantasy. It's like I'm in the room it's watching. Like I'm in the room watching game. a nerd play a video game. <laughs> <laughs> Think about the future. It looks bright, guys. Automation might destroy 20 million jobs, but we'll have VR watching people play video games at least. Universal Basic Famicom. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, that's our ranking. Tremendously different from, like, at least for me, it was going to people's houses and watching them play video games. Right, yeah. In the future, you can just watch people's video games. Actually, you can already watch people play video games from the comfort of your own home. Yeah, but you're not you're not actually there, man. Yeah, it's true. Like you're not there smelling the mac and cheese and sloppy joes and those exactly. those, you know, uh dishes full of ranch dressing from chicken wings that they left out for two days. <laughs> I can't wait and for hearing, space Doritos. And hearing their mom yell at them or something. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the mountain in Mountain Dew is Olympus Mons now, suckers. <laughs> Also, they somehow found a way to remove more vowels from it. So yeah, decisive battle. Any other comments? <laughs> they, they removed another vowel? I'm so confused. What? <laughs> Minton Dew? From Minton Dew? Mountain Dew only has Dew, one It's heat. just E W now, or what? <laughs> yeah, I guess it probably <laughs> would be. Minton <laughs> Dew. <laughs> Alright. Look. <laughs> Man, Caleb sure missed out on this episode. 
He did. So yeah, that's our ranking. Were you guys happy with it? Surprised by it? <laughs> Anyone have strong opinions on the ranking? I think overall this is just a fun remix album. Uh, I don't think it's going to create any like super strong opinions out there. Certainly, it is good drone on, you know, programmer music. So it's it's uh it's a good album, and the rankings don't. I don't think they're going to matter that much. I think uh I think they're like I don't know. I don't, there's not that much differentiating each song that it's uh the the opinions are honestly that strong on this panel. Um right. So cuz you know, it's just overall it, it stays pretty consistent. So, I don't know. I like the album a lot. But uh yeah, no strong opinions about it. Yeah, this is a very swingy episode, so there wasn't a lot of consensus on this one. It was very all over the place in the rankings, and I think that's because a lot of it falls to sort of the same level of quality. And so, like, the same way where I had to have, like, kind of bullshit reasons to rank uh, the Gojira songs, like, oh, this is all the same quality, bad. Same oh, quality. this is all Great. the same quality, great. Um, <laughs> there, there's, a, there's a very, uh, there's a Kiss album like that, which, um a lot of fans consider it to be their best album or one of their best. And a lot of those songs fall into the same sonic space where it's like they wrote two songs for this album and both those songs are good, but then they just did it 10 times and that's the album. Uh, but it just ends up being their best one. So um, kind of the same situation here where just a lot of them are so similar in quality, hard to rank. Um, in my rankings were mostly based on the original composition but with consideration taken to, you know, how the arrangement affected this particular version. Yeah, I, I agreed with, like, pretty much everything you guys said, except my rankings were different. But, like, the descriptions, <laughs> the descriptions were all totally valid, and, like, I agree completely. It's just so it's kind of up to personal preference how you rank the songs, but, yeah. The words you said are it's, correct, yeah. but the numbers are different. Mm. <laughs> Precisely. Um... This is going to sound rich coming from a guy who makes music in his bedroom, but I'm not a huge fan of the soloing over loops genre. But I, I think... You know what? You have no idea how much I fucking respect you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have, you have no idea how much I respect you. Just... Sorry, continue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I, I think... The first time that I listened through this album, I was kind of, it was kind of a drag. And the more I listened to it, I was sort of able to tap into the, oh, like the coder mentality. Not that I was ever coding while doing this, but I sort of understood how it could like fuel that sort of like, well, I have a lot of things to do. And if I don't just sit down and do them, they won't get done. And I want to only kind of enjoy this music that I'm listening to. This is a very, a, almost a perfect album for that exact description. Great background music. On a really productive day, I will just like suddenly wake up and realize that I've been fuging out and humming loudly to myself and wrote 300 lines of code. <laughs> and nice. I really hope that, that my cubicle mates all have their headphones on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a there's a podcasting friend of ours, uh, Chris Sinzak from a Decibel Geek podcast, who's hosting the Rock and Pod convention, and we were just uh, one day just hanging out. Uh, oh, it was the night that Gene Simmons was a dick to me, uh, and we were we were hanging out before then. I didn't know I was going to meet Gene Simmons that night, so that was just a weird thing. But we were talking, and he was like, asked me like, you know, I never asked you what your favorite bands are, and I was listing them off, and he said, Wow, you really like dramatic sounding music. <laughs> like, you like your music to be big and bombastic. And, you know, I hadn't really thought about it, but then I thought about, you know, the bands I like, which is like the Beatles, giant fucking pop hooks, Jim Steinman, over-the-top bombastic. And short jorts. Uh, sh and short jorts. Oh, oh geez. Well, uh, all right. Uh, derailed. Well, you know, Alice Cooper, Kiss, um, you know, Thin Lizzy, all of these bands that had sort of like these larger-than-life songs, but just these massive, you know, smacky-in-the-face hooks. And um, I, for me, I think that's kind of my goal with music is to have hooks that smack you in the face and force you to pay attention. It's uh, why when I was first getting into bands in like the, the early 2000s and I would go to live shows and I'm like, why are all these songs the bands are playing not catchy? 
And I didn't even think about it in terms of not catching. I'm just like, why can't I sing along to this? Why is this not memorable? You know, because I, you know, was listening to The Doors earlier, and The Doors are super memorable, but I can't remember anything these guys are doing, and I'm listening to it right now. And that sort of, like, developed my stance on how I want my songs to be written, how I view hooks, etc., etc. And so this album is interesting for me in a lot of ways where the compositions are good, but the way they're performed are not allowing those hooks to shine. And so there are days where I love this album and I think it's great, and there are days where I'm lukewarm on it and it pisses me off. Uh, and so it's really, this is largely, like, what kind of mood I'm in. Uh, depends on my interpretation of the album, but I think... The playing's great. Uh, I mean, Tsuyoshi Sakito, uh, as a musician, just continues to impress me. Like, the more I find out about his music, the more I respect him. Where even if I'm not necessarily a fan of the arrangements on this album, his playing is stellar. And I know he can arrange very well, and I know that what they did was very deliberate, probably so it could be, like, the kind of music you can put on in the background and just jam to. So, I think it was done very deliberately. I think they succeeded with what they set out to do but it's not necessarily what I would have wanted to have done with the material in this genre context. I feel that exact same way where like when I first heard about it, I was like, had a picture in my head of what it'll have, what it would be, which is a little bit, maybe more dynamic and a little bit more like uh, hardcore. But then what it actually is, is like, it's easy listening. It's enjoyable. It, I don't know. And it strikes me slightly different ways every time I listen to it, but I'm glad, I'm glad it exists. I'm glad we listened to it for this show. Aww. Aww. We're glad you listened to it with us. Right. Sort of. Aww. Everyone's glad it's up Steve. <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed the yeah, album. Yeah, he, he enjoyed it. He just didn't have much to say about it. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, that's our ranking. Excellent guess. Where can we find you on the internet, Victor? Oh, hey. I am uh, at the Victastic K on Twitter, and I have a SoundCloud, a Bandcamp, and I'm on Spotify and Patreon under the name James Gameboy. And um, Joe, I don't know if you used it in the episode yet, but I did a cover of um, of the auction house theme from Final Fantasy VI oh, in the yeah, style of Slipknot. Oh, we so, found it. Yeah, we haven't put it on the episode yet. But we yeah, we got it. Thank you. So it it should be appearing in an episode of Ultima Final Fantasy in the relatively near future. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. how you close out the weekly show. <laughs> uh, no, we're not gonna do that. But uh, yeah, we'll be using it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Joe told me it was the most insane thing he'd ever heard, which was the biggest it, compliment uh, I've ever received. Yeah, it's it is insane. I uh, there are not that many words I can use to describe that thing. But I am glad that it happened. I was I was waiting for a long time. I was like, is it gonna work? On yeah, it really it really took me a long time to get around to it, but I I finally did. And, and there it is, and I'm excited there for everybody to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. Uh, speaking of Joe, hey, Transition. Joe, where can people find you? Uh, when it comes to Final Fantasy stuff, you can find me uh, on the show Ultima Final Fantasy. And uh, me and Caleb have been going through the games for a long time. We're about to wrap up our show. Looks like we'll be going for another like month and a half, two months. Uh, on the weekly show, Which and then by we'll the time this episode it. comes out, might be like the week after. Yeah, might be. Uh, we'll be going past. into what we call Ooh. maintenance mode, which means we we still have a list of games to play, but none of them are strictly called Final Fantasy. So whenever it's convenient for me and Schweiz to hop back onto the show and record, we will do that. Uh, we have been going nonstop. We have not missed a week. Uh, sometimes the days during the week when we put out the episodes vary, but we have never missed. A release. Uh, By the way, I'm still waiting for this week's episode. <laughs> yeah, we're recording that <laughs> tonight when Schweiss gets home from work. So, Day yeah, jobs. that's how crazy things are. But um, yeah, so for five years we've been doing that, and that's uh, a we'll, we'll we'll be eventually getting rid of our website too. So it's not going to be ultimatefinalfantasy.com, but you can just find us on whatever podcatcher that you're on. We'll we'll keep it up, and our Patreon will be keeping up that. Uh, that feed as well so uh the, the podcast yeah ultima final fantasy i also have a godzilla podcast that i'm on called the godzilla podcast and uh that's my friend uh drew and i 
uh, going through the Godzilla series. And you can tweet me if you want at Joseph DeGolier. That's D E G O L Y E R. And the Joseph spelled the normal way. So you can come talk to me about Final Fantasy, Godzilla, or I love movies. Uh, so talk to me about movies. <laughs> did we rem- did we applaud Victor? Uh, I did, but he got the sad, pathetic clap. Oh, wow! That's I, there they go. That's oh, the makeup clap. Thank God. <laughs> uh, so, Andrew, where can people find you on the internet? Okay. Um, okay. So I do a podcast. It's a casual, all ages theme park design show, and I've had Greg and Joe on it in the past. Um, a ton of, along with a ton of other great guests, but it's called Amusement Sparks. You can find it in your podcatcher or amusementsparks.com. Uh, if the website link isn't working, just Google Amusement Sparks. It'll come up. Or you can find us on YouTube at Kuyomi, C-U-Y-O-M-I. That's the name of the channel. Thank you very much. Oh, come on. Give me better. <laughs> I can't actually pick. It's the random number generator. Hey, everybody on this show is going to have to step. Uh, have to step on your clapping. Everybody on here has been on on UFF. That's it's, crazy. Yeah, uh, I, I was going to say, except for Steve, but like, no, he guest hosted multiple episodes. Yeah, been <laughs> on UFF multiple times. It's crazy. All right. I had yeah. that thought when we started. Now I'm thinking about it again. I'm like, wow. Okay, we just right. think of this as a special secret episode of UFF. Yeah. Oh, turns hey, out we you, missed a week. Just, Here's you, us talk about the Black Mages. Yeah. Hey, do you guys still be using this? Yes. <laughs> Actually, if you use this as a filler episode for UFF, it might come out before our version, but you know what? I'm uh, cool with uh, it. Yeah, send me the file, please. Yeah, we'll, we'll, send, we'll send you the file. With the uh, Final Fantasy X theme park, your episode, like your uncut version, came out before the real version, like my version, I mean. So it's, I don't know. It's kind of cool. You guys are good yeah. to get the drop on on the authentic editor. Yeah, we're good at going, oh, shit, I don't think we have time to record this <laughs> <laughs> Grab What we have already recorded. I, I will say, if you're yeah. as far as using filler episodes, use our FF Legend uh, uh, 3 before using this one if you can. You know, this is the break, yeah, time, break in right. case of emergency right. <laughs> episode. Okay. All right, perfect. All right, and uh, we're, we're Lifted Generation. Find us at liftitgeneration.com. You can find podcasts, music. Uh, we just recorded a music video. Is it out by the time of this episode? I don't know because I don't know when we're releasing this episode because we record in advance. You know more about me than I do, future listeners. <laughs> so we'll Whoa. find out. If there's a music video, I don't know. Go watch it. If there isn't, I don't know. Listen to our albums. Buy a CD, maybe. Listen to a podcast. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. An- another great episode of Ultima Final Fantasy. Enjoy the yeah. grind. <laughs> <laughs>